stopping the Panthers 63-21. Tech rolled up 675 yards of offense and got four touchdowns from freshman Tommy Edwards. The Hokies' big playmaker is option quarterback Maurice DeShazo. He brings his act into the eye of a hurricane. Next on Sunshine Network. <laughs> Sunshine Network proudly presents the University of Miami Hurricanes football. The Orange Bowl in Miami is one of the great home fields in the history of college football. Today, the Hurricanes look to extend their amazing Orange Bowl winning streak to a 50-second game when they host Virginia Tech. And welcome, everybody, to Miami's home opener against an unbeaten Virginia Tech team. Hi again, everyone. I'm Eric Reed. Delighted to be back with Hurricanes football here on Sunshine Network. And happy as well to be joined by former Dauphin great Nat Moore for Hurricane football this year on Sunshine. Well, I'm looking forward to working with you this year, Eric. And uh, we've got a great schedule ahead of us, so let's get into it. And lots of excitement surrounding the home opener. The Hurricanes, Nat, if there is a change from a year ago, appear to be more balanced on the offensive side of the football two weeks ago in their opener at Boston College, they unveiled a much improved running game. Yeah, that, that they did. Uh, last year, they lived on Gino Toretto's arm, and this year, they've lived on Jones and Bennett legs. Uh, Larry Jones, eight rushes for 81 yards. Donnell Bennett, 18 rushes for 73 yards and two touchdowns, and that's the key to the big victory against Boston College. And the 185 yards rushing the most for a Hurricane team since October of 1991. And that Donnell Bennett was the leading rusher for the Hurricanes a year ago. Once again, he is the go-to guy when Frank Costa wants to keep it on the ground. He's a junior tailback that's a bruising runner. He has the ability to break tackles and just run through people. As you can see here on his 12-yard touchdown run, he just runs over the defenders. He keeps the legs moving, and he gets in the end zone. Just a great job of not being denied. And Larry Jones, another of the talented stable of running backs, had a big game, 81 yards, eight carries against BC. Well, Larry is the speed guy of the two. Larry is a, is a big back as well, but, you know, Larry was a sprinter in high school, and he's looking forward to playing that fullback slot because last year they both were playing uh, in the one-back offense, and he didn't get to play as much. That the Virginia Tech Hokies might be the biggest surprise in the Big East Conference so far. 2-0 for the first time since 1981. They've posted some staggering numbers, and their number one offensive weapon, Maurice DeShazo, might be one of the better option quarterbacks in America. Yeah, he was a great uh, high school option quarterback coming out of uh, high school, and he's done the same thing for the Virginia Tech Hokies. But here we see him showing his pass efficiency as he hit Steve Sanders on the bomb. Virginia Tech did rush for 500 yards last week. Sophomore Dwayne Thomas accounting for 170 of them, including 70 on this touchdown run. There, this is a local guy out of the state of Florida, Dwayne Thomas, who here shows his ability to break tackles and then shows some speed as he just outruns the defenders and gets into the end zone. Incredible. 500 yards rushing for Virginia Tech last Saturday at Pittsburgh. Well, we're just moments away from kickoff here at the Orange Bowl. Time to check in on today's weather conditions and game time emotions our man on the field former dolphin joe rose thank you very much eric and nat first of all let me by start by saying very very muggy down here on the field especially in this blue blazer first thing that comes to my mind though when i talk about the orange bowl is tradition the hurricanes have won 51 straight times here today they go for number 52 and the first thing when you talk about it what brings frank costas in the eighth grade the last time this team lost the starting quarterback for the miami hurricanes as you go to the other side and you talk about Virginia Tech talking to Frank Beamer yesterday, the importance of this game was to be competitive, maybe pull out a victory, but also the recruiting wars that go on now. You need to great, have great recruiting to win. So the state of Florida, as you look right now, Virginia Tech has seven players on the team uh, from the state of Florida, including their star running back, Dwayne Thomas, from Fort Myers. Also, they're expecting a crowd of about 54,000 on hand today. They're already starting to get very loud down here. Guys, right back up to you. Have a great one. Thanks very much, Joe. You do the same. The Hurricanes haven't lost to an unranked team since 1984. Third-ranked Miami today plays host to Virginia Tech. The kickoff right after this on Sunshine Network. Today's Miami Hurricanes football game is being brought to you by Coors Light. The Silver Bullet is the right beer now. 
by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Nothing quenches that deep down body thirst better than Gatorade. And by the Olive Garden Italian Restaurant, where all the best of Italy is yours. He would not believe it. We were doing this taste challenge, Coors Extra Gold versus Bud, and this Bud drinker, Charlie, took the challenge. He did it once, picked Coors Extra Gold, twice, he picked it again. Then, he did it a third time. He was so shocked. I'll pay you a hundred bucks if we get caught drinking another Bud. You don't have to pay a hundred bucks. Just pick up a six pack of Extra Gold and get back to real beer. Darlene, the bartender, wrote up the contract. That night, someone bought him a Bud, he just pushed it away. At Olive Garden, it's really neat. They take care of us special. The moment you walk in the front door, there's somebody there to greet you, which is what I really like. I like their food. It's a really good value. The pasta is fresh, tender, yet firm. Yeah, you just like picking <laughs> Parmesan the best, and right now I'm in a Dominican. It's like an Italian street festival in a lovely garden setting. The Olive Garden. Come visit us again soon. When you go out to play, you're gonna get thirsty. And when you're thirsty, you better have your Gatorade. It goes down easy, quenches to the core. Quenches your deep down body thirst 30% faster than water. The 1993 Miami Hurricanes steaming into their home opener here at the Orange Bowl. They won their opening game at Boston College a couple of weeks ago, had the bye week, and now come home to a house that they have not lost in in seven straight seasons. They'll shoot for their 52nd consecutive Orange Bowl victory today against the Virginia Tech Hokies, who won the coin toss, but deferred. They will kick with a strong wind at their back. We're just about set for football. Jonathan Harris and Dexter Siegler set to return the opening kickoff from Ryan Williams. Eric Reed with Nat Moore. Joe Rose down on the field. Nat, what kind of football game do you look for this afternoon? I look for a very open football game. I, I think that we'll see the Hurricanes throw the ball a little bit more. Frank Costas has a game under his belt now. And I, I expect to see DeShazo throw the football. They're a great option team, but you know, Miami has so much speed on defense that they're going to have to throw the football to make Miami play it honest. Virginia Tech only threw it 17 times last week at Pitt. They ran it 72 times for five. 100 yards. Virginia Tech making their first trip to the Orange Bowl since 1987. Ryan Williams end over end, sending Harrison back deep into the end zone. Touch back Miami, first and ten for the Hurricanes, starting out at their own 20-yard line. And Frank Costa, the quarterback. We do have a penalty marker down, and looks to be offsides against the kicking squad, Virginia Tech. Smith, the referee today of Big East officiating crew. This is a Big East matchup. Well, you know, Eric, this is uh, one of the things that the Hokies can't afford to do during the course of the ball game is to have a, a big kickoff like that where you, you've got the Hurricanes starting uh, first and 10 on the 20-yard uh, line. And because of a penalty, a little over anxious, they're offside, and now they have to kick again and give Miami a chance to get better field position. Here's Frank Beamer, the head coach at Virginia Tech in his seventh season. He's the first alumnus of Virginia Tech to coach the Hokies since back in 1945. And Dennis Erickson, today his 50th game as the Hurricanes head coach. All he's done is... Won 45, lost four, a couple of national championships. No question, one of the best football coaches in America roams the Miami sidelines. Without a doubt, he's one of the top seven active court, uh, coaches in, in football today. And uh, each year, he just seemed to continue to build on that record. Here's Ryan Williams, a 265-pound junior from Suffolk, Virginia. 
and a unique story had half of his kicking foot severed in a lawn mowing accident as a youngster he wears a specially fitted kicking shoe like the one former Saints kicker Tom Dempsey wore well second time he kicks it off this one drives Harris to the goal line picked up by Dexter Siegler at the two and Siegler brought down at the 14 yard line so Virginia Tech actually prospers because of the penalty Frank Costa will take it first and 10 for the Hurricanes, their own 15. We could go at BC, Costa's first start, not bad. 15 of 31, 205 yards. Didn't throw a touchdown, was intercepted in the end zone back in the fourth quarter. But Costa did gain some confidence off of his performance at Boston College. All right, the one interception that he had the, uh, was uh, late in the game, and it was off a tip ball, so he really threw the ball well at times. He just didn't have the success that you're used to seeing from a UM quarterback. From the 14-yard line, Miami opens up in two bats. Larry Jones, the front man in the eye. Donnell Bennett, the tailback. Big hole for Bennett. Up to the 28-yard line. So Donnell Bennett, who picked up 12 yards on his first carry two weeks ago, picks up 13 yards on his first carry today. Well, that's what they've got to do today to be successful. They've got to be able to run the ball right at them, right up the middle. And there you see Tyrell Green and, uh, and uh, the KC Jones coming off the ball, giving him a big hole through the middle. And he just did a good job of getting up the field. KC Jones, the starter at center, got a game ball two weeks ago for his effort against Boston College. Hurricanes have it first and 10, their own 28-yard line. Ball game just underway. Here's Costa's first throw as his man Larry Jones breaks a tackle 35. Jones to the 43, perhaps to the 44. And that's what uh, Larry Jones gives you is a, a back out of the backfield with good hands, can catch the ball, and will break tackles as we saw there and was able to get some extra yardage. Pick up of 15 yards, Frank Costa. To the junior fullback Larry Jones. Here we go. If we look at the instant replay, you see Costa set. He knows who he's going to. Gets the ball out to him quick. Gives him time to turn up field, shake a tackle, and here he picks up another eight, nine yards. Ran right by Stacy Henley until Torian Gray, the strong safety, was able to nail it. Two plays, two first downs for the Hurricanes. From their own 43, Costa the hands of the sophomore tight end Saeed Tucker who had four catches for 59 yards in the opener at Boston College. That was a catchable ball something he should have came down with but uh, ironically uh, I expect to see him have a big ball game. Seven first time starters of the Tech defense. Cornell Brown a true freshman the standout up front. George Del Rico good inside linebacker playing with a shoulder injury. And two starters out of the secondary injured Yarborough and Gray filling in. Second down, 10 for Miami. Their first drive, they have it their own 43. Blitz coming, Costa buried back at the 35-yard line. Ken Brown, Bernard Basham, and number 56, Lawrence Lewis. All out blitz, and they put Costa down. Right, the Hokies walked up into an eight-man front, and they just came after him. Here you see Costas check off, but he doesn't have time to get the ball off. There's a free blitzer, and, uh, you know, he ended up taking the sack. He did the smart thing, not throwing it up for grabs. Loss of seven marks it back to the 36, and sets up a third and 17 for Frank Costa and the Hurricanes. Stepping up. Here's Chris Jones for the first down at the Virginia Tech 44 yard line. On third and 17, the Hurricanes pick up the first down. Here you see uh, Costa showing a lot of poise in the pocket as he slides around and uh, he really made a great throw. He, he had the presence of mind of knowing where the line of scrimmage was. If you look at the replay, he steps up. He's still not able to throw. He slides out. Now he knows where he's at, and he finds his open man. And here you see Chris Jones making a diving catch for the first down. Fourth Good catch, execution. Fourth catch this year for Jones, except 20. And the Hurricanes in business, first and 10 at the Virginia Tech 44. And that will go against Miami. Looked like Tyrell Green moving a little bit early. The strong side guard for the Hurricanes. That was one thing Dennis Erickson was not pleased with against Boston College. Eight penalties, 90 yards. 
not only uh, against Boston College this year, but last year they had the same problem. They were giving up too many penalties, and you know, they were such a superior team, they were able to win in spite of it. But you know, this year they've got to get away from the silly mistakes that uh, hurt good football teams. First down and 15 for the Hurricanes at the Tech 49-yard line. A.C. Tellison to the short side. Jonathan Harris, Chris Jones, top of your screen. Short drop for Costa. In trouble again. Look away from J.C. Price and get to the Tellison. But he will lose a yard, getting it just shy of midfield. That's A.C. Tellison, the junior out of Bay City, Texas, had just one catch in the opener, but it was a big one at Boston College for 63 yards. Well, you know, the A.C. Tellison then did what good receivers do for you. When you see the quarterback in trouble, you come back to help him out. And there you see him come back. Defensive holding against Virginia Tech. Not your keys for Miami today. Well, we see it earlier. Miami must protect the passer. They must give Costas a little bit more time. They must stay away from the silly, silly penalties, which you know we've already seen that. And most of all, they must keep the ball out of DeShazzo's hands. Yeah, the Virginia Tech Hokies hit with a defensive holding penalty, but early on that, they're getting good pressure on Frank Costa. They're getting good pressure, but one of the things I think uh, I saw in the films earlier this week looking at him was that Frank doesn't take a real good drop when he's taking that three-step drop. He doesn't get enough separation between him and the line of scrimmage. From the Virginia Tech 39-yard line, Larry Jones and Danielle Ferguson in the backfield. This is Jones with running room. Jones spinning near the first down inside the 35 down to the 34 yard line. Ken Brown, the linebacker. Here to stop Larry Jones who picks up four. Here you see an excellent run by Jones. It's a little draw. He comes out the backside and you see him turn on the speed. Here he should have kept running. Once he stopped, the pursuit catches up to him and holds him to a four yard gain. Ken Brown, the top tackler for Virginia Tech. And there's a good look at Larry Jones who was the MVP of the Orange Bowl back in his freshman year. And again, Zev Lemelski this time off the Miami offensive front. The big left tackle charged offside. So another penalty on Miami here in their first drive. We're scoreless. 11.35 to play in a slow starting first period. So those are what we talked about at the top of the telecast. The fact that they can't afford to give up the penalties and here you see it's it probably was going to be on a quick count and Lemelski wants to get off on a quick quick count and wants to be the guy that uh, they're coming over him and he's just a little over anxious but now it puts him in second and long versus second and short well, it was second and one now is second and six at the Virginia Tech 40 three receivers bottom of your screen James Stewart the lone back he makes the catch breaks a tackle the first down over at the Virginia Tech 35 yard line. Out of the bounds by J.C. Price and by the defensive end Hank Coleman. I think we got another penalty flag down and you know James Stewart is a guy that Dennis Erickson really likes. Here he shows his ability to get out, catches the ball in his hands and then he turns up field and I think we've got a clip there that uh, is going to bring it back. Miami's third penalty of their first drive today. Frank Beamer's Virginia Tech team is trying to turn it around. They were 2-8-1 a year ago, but off to the 2-0 and start. Well, they've got to be happy. You know, they are, they're 2-0. and oh. They only won two games last year. And if they can show well, they don't have to win here. If they can just show well, they'll go back into Virginia Tech feeling good about themselves with a schedule that uh, they don't play Miami every week. Well, the Hurricanes now backed up second down and 20. Their own 46-yard line, Costa operates with four receivers, no backs out of the shotgun. This is Jamie German. German with a big play on his first play as a Miami Hurricane. He picks up 20 yards. Jamie German, the freshman from Fort Myers, Florida. Here is a kid with all the skills. Yeah. Yeah, coming out of high school, he was probably one of the most highly sought-after athletes, even though he was a defensive back. And here you see his ability to catch the football and run with it. And here he shows you some toughness where he just snatches it away from Brown and keeps going for another three, four yards. Jamin German, he's the guy that Miami is expecting big things, not only for this year, but years to come. Well, the unveiling of a potential college superstar in Jamie German injured his hamstring early in preseason. 
He picks up 21 yards, first time he touches it, first and 10, Bennett ripping through. And L. Bennett to the 30-yard line, that's a three-yard gain. And finally run down by the strong safety, Stacy Henley. Henley, a junior out of Woodbridge, Virginia, had seven tackles a year ago in the game against Miami. And he's been a busy man here on the first drive. Five minutes into the football game. No score. Hurricanes on their first possession. And they have it second down and six. Frank Costa been on the money here early. This is Larry Jones. And Jones brought down at the 25-yard line by the outside linebacker, Dwayne Knight. Eric, we see a good job by that Miami offensive line of just coming off the ball, blowing them out, blowing them back out of there and giving the the running backs a place to run and without those couple of silly penalties that they had earlier you're talking about an offensive line is doing a superb job Miami has dominated the series but seven of the ten games have been decided by ten points or less well we'd like to see a ten point or less game today but uh, I don't think we'll see it I think Miami is coming out on all cylinders and uh, they're going to take this ball in and score Tenth play of the drive third down and two for the Hurricanes 25 yard line straight ahead comes the fullback Derek Harris a sophomore out of Willow Ridge Texas he should have enough for another hurricane first down just one of five big backs that uh, have the ability to run with the football catch the football and this kid last year played linebacker and uh, they brought him over they, to develop some depth because they were going to the two back and here you see him just driving those legs and using that strength to get the first down Derek Harris five feet 11 240 pounds he's another hard charger out of that hurricane running stable Marcus Wimberly, a redshirt freshman, wide receiver in top of your screen on first and 10 from a Tech 22. Danielle Ferguson, nowhere to go. Stop back at the 27-yard line. That's a five-yard loss and an excellent play by the linebacker Andy Miller in the defensive end number six, Hank Coleman. He just, you know, they're in a, they're in a deep eye and they're trying to run a little, a little cross block on, and uh, there's just no way they've got too much penetration. There's nowhere for him to run, and he did the smart thing, just tried to hold on to the football. Nice play by Hank Coleman, a sophomore from Richmond, Virginia, who is a first-year starter and brings lots of speed to that Virginia Tech front. Second down, 15 at the Virginia Tech 32. Costa works out of a shotgun. He's got Ferguson to the bottom of the picture missed him and again good rush put on Frank Costa George Del Rico the inside linebacker supplying the heat well I, I think what we're seeing from Virginia Tech here Eric is that they're gonna come after him until he proves that he they can either pick up the blitz or they can hit the hot receiver and make a big play so they're coming after him every other down eight minutes to play first quarter this the 13th play of Miami's opening drive here at the Orange Bowl today Chris Jones, Jonathan Harris to the left, A.C. Tellison to the right on third and 15. Time for Costa. Pass Chris Jones. First down Miami at the Virginia Tech five-yard line. A 27-yard pickup on third and 15. And there is a penalty marker down at the five-yard line. It's just a good uh, route being run by Chris Jones and uh, Frank Costas having a lot of poise sitting in the pocket and throwing the football. We got an injury here, but we also have a flag down, and I think it's going to be unsportsmanlike, too much celebrating on the Chris Jones. Yeah, you've got the call right, and the injured player is William Yarborough, the sophomore left cornerback, who's starting today in the place of the injured Tyrone Drakeford, and that's a shame for Virginia Tech because Drakeford is an NFL caliber defensive back. He has 15 career interceptions and is back home in Blacksburg, Virginia, sitting it out with a shoulder injury. Every, every, everything I've read, and here we, let's go back and look at the instant replay here, and you, you see Frank Costa sitting in the pocket, lots of patience. He hits Chris Jones. Chris Jones makes the play, comes up, 
And now he gets up and he starts to celebrate, and that's a no-no in college football today. So it's a unsportsmanlike uh, conduct penalty against the Hurricanes. This has become a penalty-marred first drive for Miami. They had it at the Virginia Tech 6. They'll bring it back to the 21. And we're glad to see William Yarborough walking off okay for Virginia Tech. All right, that's, that's one thing, as we started to allude to earlier, with Tyrone Drakeford being home, they can't afford to use, lose Yarborough because they're already thin at that corner slot. Already two starters down in their secondary. Antonio Banks, the free safety. Tyrone Drakeford, the left corner, both sitting this one out injured. So first and 10 for Miami at the Hokey 21 with 7.43 left here in a scoreless first period. <laughs> Look like this drive is going to take forever. Um, you know, they keep doing things to stop themselves, but then they come back with a big play to gain the first down and keep the drive alive. And you know, that's what Miami football has always been made of, making plays. Larry Jones, the lone setback behind Frank Costa. And Jones stumbles down a loss of two back to the 23-yard line. And five Virginia Tech Hokies surrounding Larry Jones after he caught the football. Well, Virginia Tech is doing a good job of mixing up the blitz and then dropping back into zone coverage and, and trying to keep everything in front of them. And on that play, that's what they did. They, they dropped back into zone. They allowed Larry Jones to catch the ball and came up and made the tackle for no gain. Virginia, Ran a for a two-yard loss. Virginia Tech won their opener 33-16 against Bowling Green. Blew out Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh last Saturday, 63-21. Second down, 13. Again, movement on both sides. Here's Danelle Bennett turning the corner. And run out at the 16-yard line. Dwayne Knight in on the stop with Scott Jones. Let's go downstairs. Joe Rose's world. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Nat. They're talking about sportsmanship, it was very important talking to Dennis Erickson during the week. He talked to his seniors. They shook hands before the game today, something they haven't done for a while. Also, he's talking to his players on the side. Let's calm it down a little bit. The officials are going to be very tight on the enthusiasm part of this game today. Back up to you guys. Thanks very much, Joe Rose. Of course, Joe and my partner up here, Nat Moore, very familiar with these confides. You guys both played for the Dolphins here at the Orange Bowl. I don't care what anybody says. The great years of the Miami Dolphins were spent right here in the Orange Bowl, and uh, I'm very proud to be a part of that. Uh, fortunate enough to play here for 13 years, and uh, I have a lot of fond memories of this, this particular place. And Dolphin fans have many fond memories of you. 13 years, one of the very best to catch footballs in the National Football League in some great days with the Dolphins here. Well, thank you. Where were you when I needed you? When I needed a press agent, where were you? <laughs> 6.38 to play, first quarter, scoreless game. Costa has it for Miami. Second down and eight after the penalty. Costa looking for Harris in the end zone. Makes the catch, but he was out of the end zone and out of bounds. Jonathan Harris, a flanker out of Houston, Texas, running single coverage. At number 14, Torian Gray had the step but ran out of room. Yeah, he had him beat, and, and, and here's a ball that... Costas has to just line it in. He can't hang this ball because there's not much room to run. So here he hangs it up a little too high. And even though Harris has him beat, there's just not enough room to come down with the touchdown. On this drive, the Hurricanes three of three on third down, turning it into first down. They'll have to do it again to keep it alive. Third and eight from a Tech 19. Larry Jones, the lone setback. Looking for Tellison, makes the catch, first down. A.C. Tellison stopped inside the five-yard line, but a 14-yard pickup on third and eight. The Hurricanes are perfect on third down so far. That's what good teams do. They execute in the crunch, and every time their back's been against the wall, it's third down, they might have to turn the ball over with. You see, once again, they come up with a big play. Frank Costas is doing a great job under pressure of throwing the football against this zone defense that uh, the Virginia Tech Hokies keep setting back in on third down. A.C. Tellison, second catch of this drive. Tellison has never caught a touchdown pass. Very nearly broke free for six points that time. And on first and goal from a four-yard line, Virginia Tech asks for a timeout. Six minutes, eight seconds to play here in the first quarter at the Orange Bowl. The third-ranked Hurricanes are threatening here on Sunshine Network. Give me seven minutes, and I'll give you a stomach 
you can bounce a quarter on. Sheena's workout wedge and new exercise video. You want a seven minute stomach? You gotta work three muscle areas. Here, here, and here. In a fast seven minutes, we do the right exercise for the right muscles. But it doesn't stop there. When you order, we give you this inflatable workout wedge for cushion and support. And the video counts the reps, keeps the pace, and even clocks your time. Right, guys? I love it. I get a great workout. I would like to have a firm stomach like she does. In seven minutes. So if you want to bounce that quarter, call toll-free and get your seven-minute stomach from Fitness Quest. To order Sheena's new exercise video and workout wedge, call 1-800-652-2112. Use your credit card or send Trevor money order for $19.95 plus $4 shipping and handling to P.O. Box 4943, Department S, Omaha, Nebraska, 68104. Or call 1-800-652-2112. It's a silver time, time. It's a silver place. It's a silver setting at a silver place. Spray it Welcome back inside the Orange Bowl, where Miami's first drive has played like a telethon. <laughs> this will be the 17th play. They've consumed nearly nine minutes. They started back at their own 15-yard line. They've converted four third downs in the first downs. And now, Nat Moore, they have it first and goal at the four. And here you see them lining up in that power eye. And uh, let's see if they can get it in. This is what they've been working on, being able to run the football down here tough. Danielle Ferguson runs it into the end zone. We're very close to it. Thought Ferguson squeezed through, but stopped right at the goal line. Danielle Ferguson, the exciting sophomore out of Columbus High School here in Miami. And it'll be second down and inches from just outside the Virginia Tech goal line. Well, Eric, you know, it's just good to see Miami playing power football. They've been a finesse team for so many years now, and now to see where they feel they can just line up and run it at you, that's a credit to that big offensive line and those running backs that they've got there. Trying to complete. An 85-yard drive on their 18th play from scrimmage. This is Bennett, and he doesn't get in. Danelle Bennett turned away. Bernard Basham came strong from his defensive tackle spot. Basham is a big fellow, 6'6", nearly 270 pounds. He's a big guy that got penetration into the backfield and didn't give the back a chance to get up and over, and they were able to stop Danelle Bennett before... He can get his feet up on him to dive. Just a good job by that entire Hokie defense there. There goes Basham out on third and goal for Miami at the Virginia Tech one. Can the Hurricanes stay perfect on third down? We'll have to wait because Frank Costa calls timeout. So this first drive for Miami Hits a slight snag with 4.43 to play here in the first quarter. The third-ranked Hurricanes and the Hokies, still scoreless, will be right back here on Sunshine Network. If it happens in the big leagues, you'll see it. The streaks, game-saving plays, and player profiles. It's baseball's best on Power Stick baseball action. Every week on Sunshine Network. Now HBO gives you an extra channel to make it a lot easier to find something you like. Turn on HBO and you might find action or comedy. While over on HBO 2, it could be a drama or a family program. So that's two channels, two options, whenever it's convenient for you. Now that's getting the most out of your HBO. Call your local cable company now and get even more for your money each month with two channels of HBO for one great price. Order Cinemax and you'll also get a third channel of HBO for even more choice. Three great channels of HBO plus Cinemax for the most movies on pay TV. So call now. For more information about how you can order HBO 1, 2, 3, and Cinemax, call 291-2500 in Orlando and 645-4701 in Stanford. 
create a super conference, pay the players, make them semi-professional. You can never have legitimate prize fights as long as 90% of the fighters work for the same guy. Oh, the whoa, 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 it's a family show. Monday on Sunshine Network. Welcome back to the Orange Bowl, 4.43 to play in a first quarter that Miami has owned the football from start right till now and looking for points on this 85-yard drive. Now, don't miss this week's edition of Miami Dolphins Monday Night Magazine with host Paul Kennedy. Call in toll-free and talk with linebacker John Grimsley and running back Mark Higgs this Monday night live at 7, only here on Sunshine Network. With Nat Moore and Joe Rose, Eric Reed, delighted to be with you and looking to see if the Hurricanes can capitalize on this third and goal from the one. Harry Jones, Danelle Bennett behind Frank Costa. This is Jones. He doesn't get in. They'll give Virginia Tech credit. They have held three consecutive plays down near the end zone. Dorian Gray, the safety, came up, made a big hit. And now Dennis Erickson with a decision to make, Nat Moore. Fourth and goal inside the one. Well, I think he's made that decision, but here you see that hokey defensive line just not allowing that strong side uh, blocking uh, uh, on the offensive line. You're talking about the strong tackle and the strong guard. They're just not being able to move people out of there. Lamelski and uh, Tyrell Green. And he's gone 84 yards in 20 plays. They need to go a yard more on fourth and goal from the Virginia Tech one. Larry Jones up, over, and in. Touchdown, Miami. Here you see Miami use a little trickery to, to, to sort of Take the defense off balance. They bring in Danielle Ferguson, the speed guy, and go from the eye and give it to the first back up, which is Larry Jones going in from one yard out, having the Hokies think a little wide on this play. Well, they love it here in Miami. Very impressive drive if you could take away the penalties. This is Dane Pruitt. Hit both his extra points in the opener at Boston College and out of the hold of Mike Chrissy. He nails that one. So the Hurricanes take the football the first time they get it today and go 85 yards in 20 plays. And we have another flag down. It'll be assessed on the kickoff, if at all, because the Hurricanes have come off with the 7-0 lead, 3.54 left in the first quarter. Well, this is Larry Jones' 10th career touchdown. It puts the Canes up 7-0. Back for more in a moment on Sunshine Network. <laughs> A safari rarely lasts longer than a few weeks. Unless it's a safari maintained with genuine AC oil filters. Because over hill, dale, and wadi, no other filter can track down, trap, and capture more dirt. So, AC oil filters keep your engine in the hunt for a longer life. AC Delco. It's like buying time. Now through September 30th, save up to $11.60 on AC spark plugs and filters. A lot of airlines fly to Europe, but only TWA gives you room to stretch out and relax to Europe's most exciting cities. TWA replaced coach with comfort class to give you the most legroom of any airline to Europe at no extra cost. We're even adding footrests, so you'll not only enjoy Europe, you'll enjoy the flight. At La Quinta Inns, our most frequent guests are traveling salesmen. So we asked a few how they'd sell La Quinta. Let me take you through the pros and cons of staying at La Quinta. Pro, free local phone calls. Pro, free continental breakfast for people on the go. Pro, modest rates that fit your budget. Con, La Quinta. It's hard to pronounce. Let's review. Pro, 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 con. Need I say more? La Quinta. You're not staying at a hotel. You're staying with us. A 7-0 lead for third-ranked Miami against Virginia Tech, and Nat Moore, quite a drive for Miami. True, there were penalties, but some key third down makes and a critical fourth down decision for Dennis Erickson that paid off. Right here, Dennis uses a little trickery here, going with the eye and giving the ball to the first up back because the linebackers got to worry about Danielle Ferguson outside. They're late, late hitting it over the top, and Larry Jones is able to get it in. 
Uh, Hurricanes taking up over 11 minutes on their first drive. How about it? 20 plays, 85 yards. And that's what killed the other team. When you are sitting on the sideline waiting to get in offensively, it takes a lot out of you when your team just gives up that touchdown and it takes 20 plays to get it in. Scott Barnwell has it teed up for Miami at the 40-yard line. Dwayne Thomas to your right. Touchdown, Tommy Edwards on the left. Frank Costa did a nice job directing Miami to a touchdown. First time they had the football at Boston College. And again, the first time they get the football today. Costa went 6 of 8, 89 yards. Here's Thomas from a yard deep. And Thomas tries to break away, cannot to the 17-yard line. Good tackle made on the special teams by Carl Richardson, who's also Miami's starting strong safety. And we'll get a look at the option quarterback, Maurice DeShazo, through the first two weeks, 72% completions, four touchdowns, just one interception. He ranks fourth in the country in passing efficiency, a junior out of Stewart, Virginia. Joe Swarm, the fullback, Dwayne Thomas, the tailback on first down. This is Thomas, getting free of Kevin Patrick, and finally run down by Rohan Marley at the 25. That's an eight-yard gain on first down for the sophomore, Dwayne White. Excuse me, Dwayne Thomas. Dwayne Thomas. Uh, Dwayne Thomas just did a good job of breaking the tackle of Kevin Patrick, who, you know, when you get a guy in the backfield like that, uh, you, you've got to put the hat on him instead of just reaching out, and he was able to break away from the arm tackle and pick up good yardage. Well, the big question defensively for Miami, could they shut down this Virginia Tech running game? Joe Swarm, the fullback, brought down by the inside linebacker Robert Bass. Very close to a first down pickup. Well, the Hokies going with Dwayne Thomas and Joe Swarm in the backfield. Antonio Freeman, their game breaker as a split end. And up front, Jim Pine, the center, an All-American candidate. They say he's got 1,999 consecutive snaps without allowing a sack. He must play well today and keep uh, Warren Sapp out of that backfield if they're going to have success. It is a first down, Virginia Tech. And nothing doing for Dwayne Thomas on the right side. Carl Richardson, Robert Bass, and Corwin Francis smothering the sophomore Dwayne Thomas. Here you see Bass just doing a good job of filling in the gap and avoiding the, the blocker and just standing Thomas up. And he gets a lot of help from Corin Francis and C.J. Richardson as you see the Hurricanes making plays in the backfield. Lost a yard, brings up second and 11 for, G for Virginia Tech with 2.18 to play, first quarter. That's Sanders in motion. Joe Swarm, the fullback, picks up two. Warren Sapp, number 76. Robert Bass, number 49, making the stop on the senior out of Falls Church, Virginia. Warren Sapp, just a sophomore, but a star on the rise for Miami. Linebackers, Orwin Francis, the defensive star at Boston College with 14 tackles. And Dexter Siegler, he's intercepted a pass in four consecutive games for Miami. Third down and six, Virginia Tech trying to keep their first drive alive at their own 32-yard line. First throw for DeShazo. Looking for Sanders, incomplete. Excellent coverage by Dexter Siegler and DeShazo running for his life. The Hurricanes came after DeShazo on that play. They weren't going to allow him to go back and uh, set in the pocket and throw the football on rhythm. So they came after him with a blitz, and then he showed you why he's such a talented quarterback, showing his elusiveness to get outside the pocket and almost uh, coming up with a big play. Robbie Colley will drop back in a punt formation. The junior from Tazewell, Virginia, will boot it toward Jonathan Harris. One down note, Robert Bass, the inside linebacker for Miami, being helped off. He sprained an ankle. No fourth down and six. Virginia Tech trailing 7-0. And Colley spirals it. Harris backs up to the 19-yard line and cannot get away from Cornelius White. Excellent play by the redshirt freshman, Cornelius White. A 49-yard punt, negative two on the return. 
Minute 12 left first quarter. Hurricanes get the football back, leading 7-0. I think you have to credit that play to a great kick by the kicker and a little tenacity on the uh, defender going down, refusing to be blocked, and making the tackle before Harris could get started upfield. Matt Moore, how about your early grades for Frank Costa? This is first Orange Bowl start, six for eight on the first drive. I'm impressed with his poise in the pocket. He, you know, he's been sacked once, but even more so, he's been able to slide and, and, and find out the find the open receiver and, and get the ball to him in, in the crucial situations on third down. Lone setback, Danelle Bennett, Jonathan Harris in the slot. You see Chris Jones, bottom of your picture. Costa goes down inside the five down at the four yard line. And the blitzing strong safety Stacy Henley comes up with a sack. Well, I've, I've got to credit that sack to, to, to Costas because he's got to see his backside. If you've got a free blitzer coming, you know you don't have enough people over there to block him. You've got to see this guy coming and get rid of the football here. And the Hokies come up with another big play on defense and uh, set the uh, Hurricanes back. A 10-yard loss on the sack by Stacy Henley. And a little intermittent for Miami here in the first quarter, which has just 30 seconds remaining in it. And again, Frank Costa calls for timeout. Now, this is something that, uh, as a coach, I just have to eat at you. This is the second time that they've come up to the line of scrimmage, and they're running out of time, and they can't get the playoff, and he has to call timeout, which takes away the opportunity when the two-minute drill comes of having those timeouts to help you get down and score some points. Well, Frank Costa backing up the Heisman winner, Gino Toretta, last year. His first start came back just two weeks ago against Boston College, and a pretty good competition for Costa in the preseason against Ryan Collins, a very able backup. Here's your AP rankings. The Hurricanes third in both polls. The Syracuse Orangemen, the Colorado Buffaloes, Florida State Seminoles all upcoming on Miami's schedule. Miami, without a doubt, has a, a tough schedule as far as the top-notch teams that they have to play. They've, they've got some teams that are not uh, ranked and they're not noted to be first-rate football teams, but along the way they do play some top teams that will give them a test. And this is an interesting game, a test of sorts for both teams. Virginia Tech a gauge how far their program has come and for Miami a real tune-up week because next weekend they'll be at Colorado and that will be a stern test for the Hurricanes. All right, when you when you go out and play <laughs> in Colorado, first of all you got to get used to the altitude and you know, having an opportunity to play Virginia Tech and maybe get, uh, here we see uh, Robert Bass, who might be a little under the weather here, that uh, the heat's getting to him, and hopefully he's going to come back and, and play, but uh, you know, we hate to see a good player like that go out. 27 seconds to play first quarter, second and 20, and Costa's pass knocked down line of scrimmage. Well, Virginia Tech's defense, despite giving up the 85-yard touchdown drive in 20 plays. They've had their moments. They turned the Canes away three times inside the five, and they've put heat on Frank Costa throughout this opening quarter. One of our three keys to success was being able to protect the quarterback. And here you see again, what the Hokies are coming after him. They're bringing everybody, and that defensive line is just do doing a good job of getting penetration and getting in the quarterback's face. Number 98, Waverly Jackson was in Costa's face mask that time, and he goes almost 300 pounds. Hurricanes are four for four on third down. They have it here, third and 20. Costa going deep, looking for Tellison. Ball is batted up and incomplete. Chris Jones and A.C. Tellison both in the same circle going for the football. Yeah, there's got to be something wrong on that route. Someone ran the wrong route because you, you're not on a bomb. You don't expect to see both of your receivers in the same area, even though the ball hangs a little bit here. But it, as you can see, Yarbrough is back in good position so that he don't get behind him. And he comes up and is able to swat it away on the jump ball. Mike Chrissy, the transfer from Ohio State, had a great week in the opener, averaged 46 yards a punt. And he spirals this one on a line drive to Antonio Freeman. Brought down right at the 44-yard line by Carl Richardson. 
excellent special teams play by C.J. Richardson. 32-yard punt, no return. Six seconds to play in the first quarter. A 7 to nothing lead for Miami. Well, that was a big play by Richardson because if he doesn't come down with the tackle here, Freeman is outside with room to run. As you can see, as soon as he catches the football, C.J. Richardson comes up, makes a big hit because he's got a plenty of room out to the right side with the wall set up. Carl Richardson, short tackling junior out of Dallas, Texas. The Shenzo on the option. Ball is kicked away and recovered by Miami. Warren Sapp with a fumble recovery. You know, that's the 10th fumble for Virginia Tech already this year. They've lost five of them. Well... You know, Tommy Tuberville told me yesterday, the uh, defensive coordinator, that they wanted the Shazo to have to pitch, to pitch the football because they felt like if they didn't, he would be the guy that beat him. Here you see Corin Francis on the quarterback forcing the fumble as he pitches it to one of the Hurricanes. And Warren Sapp, the 290-pound sophomore out of Plymouth, Florida, pleased to pounce on it. This is just an excellent uh, play by the entire defense. De Dexter Siegler comes up, takes the receiver on, as well as the back. Well, the option offense, high risk, high reward. 7-0 Hurricanes after one. If handheld trimmers get you down, call this number for free details about the revolutionary DR trimmer on wheels. The DR rolls light as a feather on two big wheels, trims around rocks, along fences, buildings, plus mows lawns, tall grass, tough stuff, even waist-high weeds. Glides easily on this front-mounted mobile. So call toll-free now for free details about the revolutionary DR, the DR trimmer on wheels. Baseball's all-time strikeout thing was to pass on his pitching secrets to you. It has a tendency to From grips to delivery, teaching the fundamentals that made him a lone star legend. Be a wreck, keep your weight over the ball of your foot, be in control of your body. I feel the information that you receive out of this video will make you a better coach or player. Order Nolan Ryan's fastball now and receive his best-selling autobiography absolutely free while supplies last. Nolan Ryan's fastball for pitchers of all ages. Major League Baseball, America's favorite pastime, is a game rich in tradition, deep-rooted nostalgia. For every moment, for every exciting action on the field, a vivid memory is created that will last a lifetime. The Cubbies may boast the best infield in the league, but the Marlins don't miss a beat with Weiss at short and Destrati at the back. See you, Sosa. It's Florida at Chicago. Live Sunday at 2.15 on Sunshine Network. The Miami Hurricanes. Nobody plays better than they do. And nobody but nobody covers the Canes better than Canesport. 21 times a year, Canesport takes you inside the locker room and inside the coaches' minds for the most comprehensive coverage anywhere. Each issue brings you complete game analysis, exciting action photos, and more. To order Canesport, call 1-800-635-CANE. Or by mail, send 3195 to Canesport, Miami, Florida. Canesport. Don't miss an issue. Order now. A 7-0 lead for Miami, and they prosper on a Virginia Tech turnover. And that move, we talked about the high-risk offense that is the option attack. Well, the option is a beautiful offense when it's working, but here you see Corin Francis forcing the errant pitch with Terrence Harris has a chance to pick it up, and Warren Sapp comes up with the fumble recovery, giving Miami good field position, a chance to add to that lead. Let's go down to field level. Joe Rose standing by. Some uh, bad news on the field. Robert Bass, the linebacker, apparently has a spring knee, will not return. Bad news for the defense of the Hurricanes. Thank you, Joe. Well, that means that Ray Lewis, a true freshman out of Lakeland, Florida, will probably move to the middle linebacker spot for Miami. We hope Bass will be okay for Colorado next weekend. You know, Tommy, in, in talking about Ray Lewis during the course of the week, really felt that this kid is a, is a future for their football program, and here's an opportunity for him to get some seasoning here today, and hopefully he'll make the best of it. We've seen another true freshman make his Miami debut back on the first drive. Jamie German with a 20-yard reception. First time he touches the football. And that's a guy that everyone that uh, bleeds uh, orange and green has been waiting to see. Uh, uh, Jamie Germain came in here with... Uh, so much hype that uh, we just couldn't wait to get him on the field. 
Well, all five Virginia Tech turnovers this season so far have turned into points for the opposition. Let's see if the Hurricanes can keep that streak going. First place, second quarter. And James Stewart ripping away from George Del Rico, but he couldn't get away from big number 74, Jeff Holland, a sophomore out of Chesapeake, Virginia. So no gain for James Stewart, the sophomore out of Vero Beach, Florida, who missed all of last season with a shoulder injury. Another guy that Dennis Erickson likes a lot, though. Well, he was scheduled to really be the starting guy last year. He was coming on strong, and Dennis feels that this guy could be their best back uh, in the future. Second down, 11 for Frank Costa and the Hurricanes at their own 44-yard line. L. Bennett, the one back. Al Shipman in the slot. Jones to the top of your screen. Costa again deep for Tellison. And this ball well overthrown. Closest man to it was the corner covering William Yarborough. So it'll bring up third down and 11 for Miami. I really don't understand that pass there. You, you've got A.C. Tellison going deep, and he's covered like a blanket, and Costa just throws it up deep and long, and the closest guy to that was uh, Yarborough. Only score so far in this football game, a one-yard dive over the top by Larry Jones in the first quarter, capping a 20-play, 85-yard drive. Jamie German, the freshman, bottom of your picture, on third and 11. Deck showing blitz. Costa sacked again and lost the football. Frank Costa was hit. By the right side corner, Scott Jones coughed up the football, and Virginia Tech comes up with a huge play on third and 11. Well, the Hokies a minute into the second quarter. With a big turnover created, they'll have it first down and 10 inside the Hurricane 40 when we come back to the Orange Bowl on Sunshine Network. <laughs> If you like college football as much as I do, you're going to love Florida Pigskins. It's the new magazine featuring Florida's big three, the Gators, the Hurricanes, and the Seminoles. A season preview, the superstars, the strongest players, pigskin trivia, and much, much more. It's exciting news you can't find on the sports page. Pick up a Florida Pigskin at any newsstand or call 1-800-4-PIGSKIN and order your subscription today. Florida Pigskin, for the football fan who can't get enough. Sooner or later, everyone needs tires, so I'm going to give you important reasons to choose Tire Kingdom. First, you'll get the very best tire prices, guaranteed, and the best selection of tires anywhere. When you buy from Tire Kingdom, you'll get expert tire advice, fast professional service, a full written estimate, and the price we quote is the price you'll pay. Plus, we stand behind our products and service like nobody else. So when you need tires, make the right choice. Come to Tire Kingdom. Miami Hurricane football. Live the tradition as the Hurricanes battle Georgia Southern. For tickets, call 1-800-GO-CANE. Here at the Orange Bowl in downtown Miami, Florida, the Hurricanes having a difficult time with Virginia Tech. A minute in, second quarter, a 7-0 lead for Miami. And defensive end Darren Cryan of the Hurricanes wasn't overly impressed with Virginia Tech's 63-point outburst at Pittsburgh a week ago. Yeah, he, he take into consideration who they got 63 points again. I mean, it wasn't like they got it against Florida State or something, but it proves that they got a pretty, um, you know, potent offense where they can really go out and, and put some points up on the board and, you know, make it work a little bit harder and it's going to make it a little bit better of a game. Virginia Tech Hokies making it a football game with that sack on Costa and the fumble recovery. Wayne Thomas in a heap of trouble, loses a yard back to the 41-yard line. Orwin Francis, number 58, and the guy we were talking about just a minute ago. Ray Lewis, the freshman from Lakeland, Florida, playing for the injured Robert Bass. All right, here you see Ray Lewis filling in the backfield after this busted play, but Thomas does a good, good job of shaking him off, you know, and said, hey, get away from me, rookie. Second down, a dozen for Virginia Tech. Good fake by DeShazo, but through the hands of Dwayne Thomas out in the left flat. That'll bring up a third and 12 for Virginia Tech. 
13-26 left here in the second quarter. 7-0 Miami. Hard Virginia. to get a read on this Virginia Tech offense. They haven't had the football long enough. Haven't had the football long enough. Plus, they're, they're getting away from their game plan. Normally, they like to run that option. They've turned it over. Now you see them throwing the football a little bit more than shown in the first two ball games. And Steve Sanders, their flanker, wide left. Shazo looking, looking, finds Dwayne Thomas. Thomas picks up just the yard to the 39-yard line. Excellent tackle by the little man, Rohan Marley. 5'8", 205 pounds. He's a little wrecking ball on defense. He's one heck of a player. You know, he's not big, but he's a fireball, and he'll hit you. That was excellent uh, play selection. Uh, it was sort of surprising. They tried to trick Miami by coming back with the screen after Patrick, uh, Kevin Patrick sort of sniffed it out the first time. They tried it again, and he sniffed it out again. On fourth and ten, Robbie Colley hangs it high. Jonathan Harris clears out, and an excellent punt will be down inside the Miami five-yard line by Shane Miles. A good kick coverage for Virginia Tech. Hurricanes get it back, leading 7-0. The inside story starts here. From the greats of the game to current controversies, nobody covers the big stories in the big leagues like Ed Randall's Talking Baseball. Get the inside story on Sunshine. Certain TV networks are trying to charge cable customers extra for the network programming they've always gotten free and that their neighbors without cable will continue to get free. Here's what some people have to say about it. The New York Times states, the danger is that retransmission fees could loom large, threatening subscribers with large rate hikes or diminished offerings. And Forbes magazine wonders, why should cable carriers have to pay for programs that the rest of us receive for free? The St. Paul Pioneer Press says, broadcasters should not be allowed to charge for their signals just because a consumer chooses to receive them via cable rather than through an antenna. The chairman of CBS speculates that these new regulations will earn the networks a billion dollars a year. And you'll never guess who's going to be footing the bill. Tell the networks you're not going to pay for free TV. Cast your vote for free TV. Call 1-800-FREE-TV-3. Hit the field with Florida's baseball team and get an inside look every week from the pros and coaches on the Florida Marlins Weekly. Sunday nights at 6 on Sunshine Network. Last October in Blacksburg, Virginia, the Hurricanes rolled up nearly 500 yards of offense, most of it through the air. Gino Toretta connecting with Lamar Thomas. One of his three first-half touchdown passes, two of them went to Lamar Thomas in a 43-23 hurricane victory. But having a much more difficult time of things here in the first half of this football game with Nat Moore and Joe Rose on the field, Eric Reed welcoming you back inside the Orange Bowl. Virginia Tech acquitting themselves pretty well so far. Last year, the Hurricanes had their way up there, but uh, so far today, Virginia Tech defensively is doing a good job of mixing up their coverages and their blitzes. You know, the last big play where they forced a fumble, they came with a corner blitz. Sort of surprised uh, Costa and uh, came up with a big play once again. And that's why they're successful so far. Big test for Frank Costa in his offense on first and 10 at the five-yard line. But L. Bennett, penalty marker down, gets just a yard around right tackle. against Miami, a holding call. Let's go downstairs to Joe Rose. Nat, you hit it right on the head. Virginia Tech throwing every possible kind of blitz there is at the University of Miami right now. The offensive line was together. They're making a lot of mistakes. Frank Costa not picking the blitz up right now. He's really struggling. They're blitzing from everywhere at Virginia Tech. Well, Frank Costa and his offense, Nat Moore going to have to adjust. The Hokies have backed them up and have declined the penalty. So it'll be second down and 10 at the six-yard line. They're, they're sort of reeling right now on offense. They're going backwards, and, you know, that's what you got to do against a, a potent offense like the Hurricanes is, you know, put some self-doubt in there and have them wonder whether they can get the job done. Costa has missed on his last three pass attempts. George Del Rico, the inside linebacker again, showing blitz. 
Costa rolling out of his own end zone. And he stepped out of bounds. That will not count on the Jonathan Harris catch up at the 34-yard line. Frank Costa stepped out of bounds back at the four. Uh, he, he did a good job of throwing the football, but he's got to be more aware of where he is. And here you see him step out of bounds before he lets the football go. Big guy was chasing Costa, Waverly Jackson, the 6'3", 290-pound redshirt freshman defensive tackle. And that brings up third down and 11 for Miami. Well, 14 to play, second quarter. Just a 7-0 lead for the nation's third-ranked football team. You know, we, we talk about Costa stepping out of bounds, but he, you have to remember he's running for his life because uh, Waverly Jackson showed a little speed there. Derek Harris, lone setback for Miami. Wimberly to the top. Chris Jones and Jonathan Harris to the bottom. Costa out of his end zone, incomplete. And Frank Costa felt the heat that time from Hank Coleman and Virginia Tech's pass rush as Miami reeling right now. They'll have to punt it from deep in their own end zone. Well, they're, they're really showing no respect for that Miami offense at this point. They're just coming after him and say, beat me if you, if you can. And they're getting in Costa's face. They're hitting him every time he releases the ball, if the, even if he's not coming, if they don't come down with the sack. So you have to give Virginia Tech a lot of credit for the way they're playing football at this point. Mike Chrissy's first punt traveled just 32 yards. This one caught on a fair catch by Antonio Freeman at the 42-yard line. A 37-yard punt that time for Mike Chrissy. Good field position, first and 10 for Virginia Tech at the Miami 42 with 12 minutes to play. Here in the second quarter, Reese DeShazo and the Hokies trailing 7-0. What'll be interesting here, Eric, to see if Virginia Tech goes back to their offense, the offense that they were able to amaze 500 yards with last week, and that's that option. Joe Swarm, Wayne Thomas, the running backs in the eye, Kenny Holmes, and Patrick Riley engaging in some combat line of scrimmage. Three penalty markers fly. Hurricanes have Kenny Holmes. And Pat Riley in on that defensive front along with Kevin Patrick and Warren Sapp. Ray Lewis, the new inside linebacker for the injured Robert Bass. It's offsides against Miami. And you see Holmes, was redshirt freshman from Bureau Beach, number 90, coming across. Right, he's just a little over anxious, want to get in and get some get some action there, want to hit somebody and jumps offside. But, uh, you know, they've got to show more poise than what they've been doing. And, you know, Miami right now is making every mistake possible. And they're just fortunate that they're up 7-zip. Cornelius White to the right. This is Dwayne Thomas sweeping left. And another penalty marker down. Carl Richardson, Ray Lewis, and Warren Sapp stopping Dwayne Thomas for no gain. This one a hold on Virginia Tech. Well, we've got the Hokies walking backwards from... But once again, the disturbing thing is it was a five-yard gain. Just a straight-ahead uh, off-tackle power play, and Dwayne Thomas bounces it outside and picks up five yards, but you see the pursuit, the quickness of that hurricane defense as they all come in and gain tackle in the end. There's a... A shot at it holding where they were holding Riley, and he did a good job of disposing of the blocker and getting outside. From the Miami 49-yard line, first and 17 for Tech. Ray Lewis wrapping up Dwayne Thomas with an assist from Rohan Marley. And Ray Lewis, number 52, the freshman from Lakeland, Florida, making his presence known right from the start. And he's showing you why the Miami defensive coaching staff is so high on him. And we've seen him twice now fill the gap, come in and make a big play. Here you see he's isolated. Boom, big tackle. Here he stands him straight up, doesn't give him any room to run. Ray Lewis signed late with the Hurricanes, called up defensive coordinator Tommy Tuberville. Early in July said, Coach, I've passed my test scores. You got a scholarship for me? The Shazo on second and 18. Sack back at the 42-yard line. And big number 43, Patrick Riley, along with Kevin Patrick, put the wrapper on him. Just a great job by Kevin Patrick there, pushing that defensive tackle back past the quarterback and then swooping in on him, coming down with the sack. 
Kevin Patrick does a good job of just pushing that offensive tackle back, and then boom, there he goes. And then Patrick, Patrick Riley coming in on top. The 15th career sack for Kevin Patrick and his second this year. Third and a bundle. Third and 25 for Virginia Tech. Back at their own 43. The Shazo on the keeper breaks away from Ray Lewis, but not from Terrace Harris, the free safety. Down to the Miami 46 yard line. But on third and 25, way short, a fourth down punting situation for Robbie Colley and the Virginia Tech Hokies with 10 minutes to play. First half, and the Hurricanes still in front, seven to nothing. Still in front, but we need a big play. We need we need uh, Jonathan Harris or someone to stand up and, and do something big. You know, in, in the past, they've had Kevin Williams back there running it back, and here's an opportunity to help your team out. Another excellent punt. And fortuitous bounce for Virginia Tech. This one rolls dead at the Miami three-yard line. So the Hurricane offense back in the shadows of their own goalpost. The 7-0 lead will be right back after this. Miami Hurricane football. Live the tradition as the Hurricanes battle Georgia Southern. For tickets, call 1-800-GO-CANE. If you like college football as much as I do, you're going to love Florida Pigskins. It's the new magazine featuring Florida's big three, the Gators, the Hurricanes, and the Seminoles. A season preview, the superstars, the strongest players, pigskin trivia, and much, much more. It's exciting news you can't find on the sports page. Pick up a Florida pigskin at any newsstand or call 1-800-4-PIGSKIN and order your subscription today. Florida pigskin for the football fan who can't get enough. Lots of ways to work up a deep down thirst. And with eight flavors, there are lots of Gatorade ways to quench it. As Sapp and Darren Cryan come up with the sack. Here you see DeShazzo goes back, and they're trying to hit Antonio, trying to hit Freeman, going down the uh, left side, and Warren Sapp comes in and doesn't give him time to step up and throw the football. Well, Antonio Freeman has been the big playmaker as a wide receiver for Virginia Tech, but he was shut out last week at Pitt. Hasn't had a catch yet today. Nice run by Thomas on second and 18. He gets about 12 of those yards back. But Thomas is just uh, a big, strong runner that runs with reckless abandon. That you know, once he decides that he's going where he's going to go, he puts his shoulder down. And he goes north and south. Here you see he's getting wide. He decides to cut it back, leaps through, and just keep grinding to try and pick up the extra yardage. Wayne Thomas at a Bishop Perot in Fort Myers backed up Vaughn Hebron last year at Tech. Hebron, a rookie free agent who made it with the Eagles. Third down, DeShazo keeps it, and Patrick Riley wrapped him up with an assist from Baraka Short, number 50. And that'll be well short of a Virginia Tech first down and bring, bring upon a fourth down and eight with a minute left here in the second quarter. 7 nothing, Miami out in front. Only the Larry Jones one-yard touchdown run back in the first quarter. And we get a timeout. Miami calls for time with 49 seconds to play here in the second period. It has been an unusual first half, Nat Moore. Well, with the Hurricanes leading seven to nothing, let's find out what's taking place down on that Hurricane sideline. We go to Joe Rhodes. 
Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Nat. Why this great football game is taking place, a lot of volunteers from the University of Miami are doing something very special. It's called the uh, Flood Relief helping Iowa victims with those floods that we've been seeing. As you can see, lots of money being donated. The fans have been gracious. I want to ask you guys a question. How many of you have volunteered your time for today's game? I'd say it's at least 60, 70 people. Probably more, yeah. It's a great thing. How much money do you think we're going to raise, and what caused you guys to come do this for the opener today? Last year, the opening game, uh, they took up money for us for no reason, really. So this year, we're lucky we get a chance to pay them back. Any thoughts real quickly? Um, I'm from the Midwest, Kansas City, so I think it's really great what we're doing, helping out the flood victims. I think we will pull in a lot of money today helping them out. Okay, guys, well, we have a great game going on. It's great to see people open up their wallets for such a great cause. Back up to you guys. All right, thanks very much, Joe Rose. Eric Reed with Nat Moore upstairs in the booth, 49 seconds left. In a first half, and I would guess that man is very pleased with Frank Beamer, but a decision for him now, fourth and six. From the 37-yard line in Miami territory, you're trailing 7-0, 49 seconds to play in the second quarter. Well, I, I don't think he has anything to lose. He's got to go for it. They seem to have Miami on the ropes. You know, uh, just as Miami called timeout, their defense looked a little tired. They've been on the field a lot this half. And uh, ironically, he's changed his mind, and he's going to punt the football. Just as we spoke. Interesting decision for Frank Beamer playing a little bit safe. And he'll send Robbie Colley in the punt it from midfield. The Hurricanes have nobody back in punt return formation. And this one sails into the end zone. So Miami makes out just fine. They still lead it 7 to nothing, And with 41 seconds left in the first half, it's a 7-0 lead for Miami, but well, this is a hurricane team that has struggled on both sides of the football so far through a half. Yeah, they, except for that first drive, and even in that drive, they made a lot of mistakes. Miami has really struggled offensively. Defensively, they've been able to stop them when they had to, but ironically, it's been a game where Virginia Tech has been superior. Plenty of single game tickets for Hurricane home games here at the Orange Bowl. For ticket information, call 800 Go Canes. See what Miami comes up with here in the final 41 seconds of the first half. On first down, time for Costa, and caught by Chris Jones up at the 32 yard line. 12 yard gain. And another nice grab for Chris Jones, the junior from West Palm Beach, Florida. Thirty-six seconds left in the first half. And the Hurricanes probably won't play it safe here. They'll look to strike quickly in our closing seconds first half. Frank Costa sends Jones wide to the right. Harris in the slot on first and ten. Donnell Bennett, the lone setback. The screen complete to Bennett. And Bennett bounces out three Hokies to get out of bounds and stop the clock with 28 ticks left on it. And penalty markers fly again here at the Orange Bowl. That was just a lot of determination on a young back by a young back uh, Donnell Bennett of knowing what he needed to do to get out of bounds to stop the clock and he just broke tackle after tackle and by putting forth all of that effort he's going to be rewarded with a 15-yard penalty for being hit late you see coleman almost spying in there and almost picked off that quick screen or that middle screen shall i say to uh, bennett but you have to wonder if virginia tech has had such great success coming after him why now are they playing a zone defense and allowing them to just move the ball down the field? Oh, those two-minute woes. <laughs> you, 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 you wonder if a two-minute offense is that good as a fan, how come they don't do it the whole ball game? Well, the defense has a bunch to do with it as well in the final minute of a half or a game. But how about Donnell Bennett running with the determination that he plays with? Jamie German, the freshman, top of your picture. On first and 10 from the Hokie, 47. Short drop and nearly intercepted. That ball thrown behind Chris Jones. Well, once again, they went man and came after him, and you see the errant pass. You know, 
Costa seems to be a kid that's not handling the pressure well at this point, and he's, you know, this is only his second start. So as a coach, a defensive coach, you say, well, let's test him. Let's go after him and see if he can handle the pressure. And that's what they're doing. Frank Costa has hit 10 of 18, 127 yards through the air in this first half. 25 seconds left in it. Second down and 10 for the Canes at the Tech 47. Costa has his man complete. Sae Tucker for the first down. Needed 10, gained 11. Clock winding down, 17 seconds to play in the half. From the Tech, 36. Costa stops the clock. That'll bring up a second and 10. They have 13 seconds left in the second quarter to add to their 7-0 lead. Now they're doing a good job of moving the football, but Virginia Tech is helping them by playing that zone defense. If you go back and you look at the success that Frank Costa has had today, it's been against the zone. He's 11 of 19 for 138 yards, but I would say 10 of those 11 completions have been versus the zone. When they've come after him with either blitz or played man coverage, he hasn't had the same degree of success. Well, Costa said after the Boston College game, I got some of the doubts out of the way, but it was just one game. <laughs> On second and 10, deep drop for Costa. Loads of time and a wide open side E. Tucker, but Costa bounced it in incomplete. And at the 10-yard line, Tucker was uncovered. Well, that was six. If, if he can just get the ball in, fit it in there, he had him for six. But I think Costas tried to aim that one. He was so wide open, he didn't want to miss him. He's got good protection. He's sitting back. He's got a good deep drop where he can read the field. And here he just tries to aim it instead of just throwing the football, letting his natural ability take over. Hurricanes could use a big play here. Third and ten. Eight seconds left in the second period. From the check, 36. Chris Jones dropped it. Would have been a first down at the 18-yard line. Defensive coverage in the secondary from Larry Green. And Jones can't figure it out. Well, he, he made the mistake as a receiver. That kind of ball, you've got to catch the ball in your hands. He let the ball get to his body, and it comes off the pads. You know, he's so intent on trying to catch it and get out of bounds to stop the clock. But he's got to take care of catching the football first, and he's got to believe in his hands. Catch the football in your hands. Young receivers, take note of that. Two seconds left here in the first half, so Frank Costa will dial one before throwing. He needs to get it into the end zone. Last play of the half. Caught by Marcus Wimberly, but out of bounds. So it will not count, and that ends a bizarre first half here at the Orange Bowl. The Hurricanes scored the first time they touched the football, but it took them 20 plays to go 85 yards. Larry Jones with a one-yard touchdown run, and that's all the scoring we saw here at the Orange Bowl in Miami's home opener. Miami leads Virginia Tech at halftime, 7 to nothing. Welcome back inside the Orange Bowl at the half. The third-ranked Miami Hurricanes with their hands full. 7-0 their lead over an unranked but inspired Virginia Tech football team. Welcome back, Eric Reed, along with Nat Moore. We were impressed with what Virginia Tech accomplished through their first two football games and even more impressed after this first half. Right. To today, Virginia Tech is controlling the line of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively, and that's why they're still in this ball game because Miami has not been able to execute offensively and defensively. They're getting pushed around. Just the one touchdown drive for Miami. First time they had the football, they went 20 plays, 85 yards, a drive that began with a big play from a big playmaker, freshman Jamie German. Well, Jamie German is the guy that everybody's been waiting to see. He, he came in here with so much hype, and here you see him on the flanker screen where he comes in, he catches the ball, and this is what we're looking for, him showing that quickness and that ability to run in the open field, and he comes up with a big 21-yard gain. And that was on a third down play when Miami 
he really needed it. Now the Hurricanes had a few opportunities inside the Virginia Tech five-yard line. They finally got it in with Larry Jones going over the top for a one-yard touchdown. Let's go downstairs. Joe Rose is standing by with Virginia Tech head coach Frank Beamer. Thank you guys very much. Coach Frank Beamer will be with us in just a second, the head coach from Virginia Tech. Obviously, the team right now very excited about the way they played at this point. Coach, you got to ask you real quickly, you got to be very pleased defensively the way this team played in the first half. Yeah, we are. Uh, defensively, I thought we came around and uh, got some pressure on their quarterback and had them out of their rhythm a little bit. Offensively, we got to pick up the slack, though. What's happened in the second half, Coach? What do you look to do maybe offensively to score some points? I think the whole key right now is well, does our offense control the ball right now. I think that's the whole key. Okay, thank you very much. Good luck, Coach. Right back up to you guys. Good right. looking plan for Virginia Tech in the second half. Thanks very much, Joe Rose. Nat Moore, no question. The pass rush of Virginia Tech in the first half disrupted Miami's offense. Well, they did a, a great job of just mixing up their coverages and their blitzes, and they came after Frank Costas in so many different fashions. Here you see him getting a drop, and all of a sudden, here comes the corner from the weak side where, you know, he's got to be able to see that. You know, he, he's going back, he's looking one way, and he's not scanning the field. Well, you wonder, might Dennis Erickson go to Ryan Collins, his number two quarterback in the second half? We'll find out when the third quarter begins right after this on Sunshine Network. Those burning jams and sizzling slams can now be seen where the hottest sports in Florida come to play ball. Because Sunshine just got hotter. The heat's now on Sunshine. Sonny King advertises his vehicles in the newspaper, but he knows it's hard to appreciate their value with just a black and white picture. My Uncle Henry wouldn't drive anything but the Buick Park Avenue. He says that Buick's commitment to quality, the power and smooth handling, and the ultimate comfort on the road are the main reasons he chose the Park Avenue. Of course, the low cost per month to drive it had a lot to do with it also. The next step is driving one at Orange Buick GMC. You'll like that electronic shop that offers competitive prices in the convenience of, say, a mall location. A place that sells this year's merchandise, not last year's inventory. Plus, this electronic shop would sell quality brand name merchandise. There must be some place. Of course, great locations, quality merchandise, competitive prices. Electronics Plus, today's technology when you need it. Their incredible battles in the 70s brought the tennis world to its feet. Now, the legends return to the courts for more unforgettable matches on the Champions Tour. Semi-final and final round coverage begins Monday on Sunshine Network. Back at the Orange Bowl, where the Hurricanes have the 7 to nothing lead on Virginia Tech. This is an unranked Virginia Tech team. Miami hasn't lost to an unranked team in a long, long while, not since 1984, when unranked Maryland came to the Orange Bowl and knocked off Miami 42 to 40. Scott Barnwell about to kick the third quarter off. This one settling down to Dwayne Thomas, eight yards deep in the end zone, touchback, first and 10 Virginia Tech at the 20 yard line. Here are the first half numbers, just two yards passing for Virginia Tech, but just two yards rushing for Miami. Well, that's the surprising number. You know, Miami really controlled the football that first drive where they had the 20 play, but ironically, it was mostly on third down where they were able to come up with a big play for, to maintain possession of the football. They're just not getting any movement up front, and the backs have nowhere to run. Well, that's got to be disappointing to Dennis Erickson. Maurice DeShazo. On first down, gives it to Dwayne Thomas, and he pulls Ray Lewis for three yards up to the 23-yard line. Ray Lewis, the freshman from Lakeland, Florida, filling in for the injured Robert Bass, who went out first quarter with a sprained knee. Hurricanes going with Lewis as the middle linebacker. Here are your individual numbers. Eight carries, 28 yards for Thomas. DeShazo just one for three. Second down and six. Option flip to Thomas the first down up to the 33 yard line brought down by the free safety Terrace Harris and that's Virginia Tech at their best DeShazo making the decision on the option flip back 
Well, DeShazo is doing a good job of executing here. You see him pull it out from the fullback. Rohan Marlin forces him to pitch, but what they're not getting is Paul White was not able to fight off Antonio Freeman and come up and make the play on the back early, and they're getting the big gains to keep this drive going. That was a 10-yard rush for Dwayne Thomas. Steve Sanders to the right. Antonio Freeman, top of your screen, on first down. Again, it's Thomas. And again, he runs right in to Ray Lewis, uh, number 52, in the center of attention in this football game. Ray Lewis is doing a good job of scraping <coughs> scraping off the uh, the uh, blocks and coming out to the left and right and filling the gap. But Darren Cron was the guy that really made this play here where he stuffes the, tack, the guard and forces uh, Thomas back inside to Ray Lewis. Second down and 10 for Tech. They're on 34. First drive, third quarter. Joe Swarm, the fullback, up to the 35-yard line. Warren Sapp got him around the ankles, brought down Swarm after a short game. Miami's defensive line is starting to play with a little bit more authority, and they're, they're starting to control it a little bit better. The only thing that's hurting them so far this half is the uh, option, and uh, it's going to be up to the linebacker and the strong safety to make that play. Third down and nine for the Hokies. The 35. The chase out in trouble. Brought down by Darren Cryan. Back at the 32-yard line. Loss of three. And Darren Cryan with a big sack. So three and out for the Czech offense. On their first try here in the second half. Here you see Darren Cryan getting good pressure in the backfield, but then having good vision to see DeShazzo coming out and comes off and comes down with the sack. That's the fourth sack today for the Hurricane defense. Robbie Colley will punt it to Jonathan Harris, awaiting back at the 32. Nice punt. Harris at the 25. Harris at the 30. End of the 34-yard line. 12-14 left in the third quarter. A punt of 43 yards, short return, and will return with the Hurricanes, leading Virginia Tech 7 zip if handheld trimmers get you down, call this number for free details about the revolutionary DR trimmer on wheels. The DR rolls light as a feather on two big wheels, trims around rocks, along fences, buildings, plus mows lawns, tall grass, tough stuff, even waist-high weeds. Glides easily on this front-mounted mobile. So call toll-free now for free details about the revolutionary DR, the DR Trimmer on Wheels. Baseball's all-time strikeout king wants to pass on his pitching secrets to you. It has a tendency to From grips to delivery, through. teaching the fundamentals that made him a lone star legend. Be erect, keep your weight over the ball of your foot, be in control of your body. I feel the information that you receive out of this video will make you a better coach or player. Order Nolan Ryan's Fastball now and receive his best-selling autobiography absolutely free while supplies last. Nolan Ryan's Fastball for pitchers of all ages. Come on, let's mix it up. Let's mix it up. There are lots of ways to work up a deep down thirst. And with eight flavors, there are lots of Gatorade ways to quench it. Eric Reed, Nat Moore, Joe Rose here at the Orange Bowl where the Hurricanes lead Virginia Tech third quarter, seven to nothing. Sunshine's next University of Miami football telecast comes your way Saturday, October 2nd at 11 p.m. The Georgia Southern Eagles come to the Orange Bowl to battle the nationally ranked Hurricanes. Hope you'll be with us for all the action right here on Sunshine Network. The Miami offense back on the turf of the Orange Bowl. Bill Bennett leading rusher first half, five for 19. Chris Jones, four catches, 72 yards. Big first half of well, the defense getting a lecture over on the Hurricane bench. First and 10 Miami, their own 34. Lone setback is Bennett, and Costa gives it to him. 
That's the yard for Donnell Bennett. George Del Rico, number 41, and Brown, number 44, swarming to the ball carrier. Well, once again, they're running Bennett behind Rudy Barber and uh, uh, Ray Perry, the, the connection from Carroll City. And they're not really getting much movement here. As you see, he, he's hitting it up in there. But Barber gets beat there, and Del Rico comes in and makes the tackle. Marcus Wimberly, Jamie German, and Jonathan Harris all split to the left on second down and eight. Costa feeling the pressure, but completing it to Marcus Wimberly. First down gain in the Virginia Tech territory at the 45-yard line where Stacy Henley wraps up Marcus Wimberly. First catch in the career of Marcus Wimberly, the redshirt freshman from Memphis, a 19-yard gain. That just goes to show you how much talent this Miami football team has at receiver. When you could bring in a <clears throat> Jermaine German, a uh, Marcus Wimberly, and all of a sudden you're talking about these are the guys of the future, the guys that show that quickness and, and speed of foot. Out of the shotgun on first and ten for Costa and the Canes. Now he comes back up to the line of scrimmage. From the tech, 46. Looking over the middle, that's Tellison! Penalty marker down, Tellison in for the touchdown! If it stands, 45 yards and the first touchdown in A.C. Tellison's career. There is a penalty marker down. I think it's going to stand. I think it's against the Hokies and uh, was a pass interference, but let's see. A 45-yard touchdown hookup. Frank Costa to A.C. Tellison. That more, they've become a big play duo. Big play duel, and this is what the Miami fans are accustomed to. Their quarterback finding that open receiver that can get it in the end zone, and A.C. Tellison showed why he is expected to be the replacement for Lamar Thomas of uh, many, many years, putting the touchdowns in the end zone for the Hurricanes. Dane Pruitt to attempt the point after touchdown for Miami. Nails it. Now Frank Costa's first touchdown pass as a starter and his third career touchdown. 45 yards up top to A.C. Tellison and the Hurricanes leave Virginia Tech at the Orange Bowl 14 to nothing. Well, they caught him in a, in a uh, man coverage with no one in the middle of the field and had a double slant route. And A.C. was able to get it and go in the distance. Create a super conference, pay the players, make them semi-professional. You can never have legitimate prize fights as long as 90% of the fighters work for the same guy. Oh, 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 it's a family show. Monday on Sunshine Network. Keo Sewing Center, the sewing machine. If you're into sewing, go to Kill Sewing Center in the Lee Road Shopping Center. Inside Joanne's Fabrics at Bradley Square, Florida Mall Terrace, and Alafaya Commons, Alafaya, and Colonial. Kill Sewing Center is your headquarters for Viking and white sewing machines and sergers. Kill sells top quality pre-owned machines with an experienced local service department. Kill Sewing Center, serving Central Florida for 32 years. It's time for a year-end clearance sale, but we're almost out of the 93s. We're putting our 94s on sale. Hi, I'm Bobby McClellan. It doesn't make sense to buy a leftover 93 Plymouth Voyager when you can own a brand new 94 for just $14,988. You can own this new Voyager with automatic transmission, air conditioning, and lots more for just $14,988 or just $2.51 a month at only 5.9% APR. It's your money, so spend it wisely at Fairway Chrysler Plymouth where I'll bet a dollar I can deal with you. Six on Sunshine Network. 45-yard touchdown pass from Frank Costa to A.C. Tellison. Let's go downstairs to Joe Rose. Okay, okay. thank you guys very much. I have uh, maybe the most famous Virginia Tech alumnus with me, Don Strzok. Don, it's been a tough game, and so far uh, you're not real excited. No, it's, uh, we made mistakes on offense, uh, fumbled a punt, whatever. We had the opportunity twice inside the 50 to score, but 
against this defense, it's hard. They're awful fast and awful good. Now, uh, you follow uh, the Virginia Tech team. We saw you last year up there. You're a big fan, and uh, do you travel a couple games every year? Well, I usually go to at least one if I can help it. And uh, uh, it's a lot of fun to watch the play. They're getting better here, but, you know, in the Big East, you got the, the Miamis and Syracuse and Boston College and West Virginia. It's a tough uh, road to hoe. And uh, uh, just being down 14 here, uh, uh, they've hung in the game, and hopefully we'll back in it. All right. Thank you very much, Don. Good luck to your team in the second half. Thanks, Joe. All right. Back up to you guys. Thank you, Joe Rose. Taking care of a guy that used to take care of him and a good buddy of yours, Snap Moore. John Strock, one of the final quarterbacks that uh, – Ever play in the NFL. 17 years, he got it done. Scott Barnwell kicked it off from midfield, boomed it through the end zone. The Hokies will take it first and 10, their own 20-yard line. 10.57 to play, third quarter here at the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. Maurice DeShazo and the Hokies trailing 14 to nothing. Another look at that 45-yard hookup. All right here, here you see Costas does a good job of looking left and throwing right, and A.C. Tellison catches the ball and then runs it in for the 45-yard touchdown. Big Good play. execution. Big play for Tellis in his ninth career catch, his first touchdown. <laughs> On the first down give, it's the backup fullback, Brian Edmonds, a redshirt freshman from Blackstone, Virginia, getting just a yard. Warren Sapp, Kevin Patrick, right side of that defensive line of scrimmage for Miami making the play on Edmonds, who came into this game averaging nearly eight yards a carry through Tech's first two. Second and eight. The Shazo firing incomplete, and Warren Sapp putting heat on the Shazo again from the right side. I tell you, Warren Sapp showed some speed there for a big guy. Here's a guy that's 290 playing defensive tackle, and he looked like a sprinter going after DeShazo there. Matter of fact, he used to be a tight end. And he's probably one of the best athletes on that Miami football team. Can dunk a basketball at 290 pounds. Came to Miami with thoughts of catching touchdown passes dancing around in his head. Now the only dancing he likes to do is after a sack. Third down, eight for the Hokies. Early moments, third quarter, Virginia Tech trails by two touchdowns. And Chesa gets away from Cryan, going deep for his tight end. Picked off by Carl Richardson at the 35-yard line. That's the second interception in as many games for Richardson as the Hurricanes starting strong safety. There you see both hurricane safeties do a good job. Carl Richardson was right there and then came down with the pick, but Terrence Harris was also there. So just great, great execution by the secondary of knowing where they've got to get to cover the tight end. The tight end's going through the middle. DeShazo thinks he has indeed. And here you see both safeties making the play. Pass intended for the tight end, John Burke, covered well. Carl Richardson taking the phone call. 10-11 left, third quarter, Costa. Has Chris Jones up at the 47-yard line. Penalty marker is down. If the play stands, it's a 12-yard pickup. Yeah, Frank Costa spreading it around. Spreading it around, but you know, we're getting back to the same thing that developed in the first half. Miami was able to go down and score, and then all of a sudden, there were penalties. And, and it took them out of the rhythm, took them out of their game. And here we go again. Miami, big play. Penalty calls it back. You're right on the money, though, Nat Moore. Not much rhythm to Miami's game today. This looked like a holding on Ricky Perry here. He's off. Matter of fact, it's almost a takedown. And, you know, if you go hold, hold. Don't let the quarterback get killed. Well, Virginia Tech off the 2-8 and 1 campaign wanted to get more speed on the defensive side. They have. They're a much better team than they were a year ago. First down and 25 to go for the Canes. Costa for Jones, deflected line of scrimmage. That'll bring up a second and 25. Last week, 
Dennis Erickson, a couple weeks ago, I should say, Dennis felt that Costa had five to six catchable footballs dropped. But he also had four batted down at the line of scrimmage. I, I think that stems from, if you see, he doesn't get good depth with the three-step drop. He backs out so that, therefore, he's taking smaller steps and he's not getting any separation from that uh, defensive and offensive line. Looks like number 74, Jeff Holland, got a big hand on that Costa ball. On second and 25, penalty markers down again. Jones bats it down. Chris could not come up with it at the 38. Covered well. Now the free safety, Torian Gray. Ricky Perry, the offensive tackle, comes hobbling off for the Hurricanes. Offsides, Virginia Tech. So that was a free play for Miami. That'll make it second down and 20 for Miami. Here you see Chris Jones goes up. He, co he comes close to coming down with it, but as you can see, Virginia Tech has three men around the ball, putting a hat on him, making sure that he don't come down with the catch. Frank Costa so far, 13 for 25, 203 yards, and the touchdown. Four receivers, no backs. Costa out of the gun, finds Jamie German. Look at him go. And brought down quickly at the 32-yard line. Good shoot-top tackle by number 24, William Yarborough. I think that was a touchdown saving tackle because Jamie German was sprinting to the outside and if he'd have got outside it was all over. He has that kind of speed. Pick up of seven. This is the same play that he caught earlier in the ball game and here you see his running instincts. He sees it all crowded there and he tries to get outside and Yarborough makes that saving tackle to keep him from getting there. We both talked to receiver coach Charlie Williams at Miami this week and he is excited as a coach could be to have a pupil like Jamie German. Third down, a dozen for Miami, and before Costa could get the play going, that only markers again. You know, the interesting part about talking with Coach Williams was that he was so worried about when Jamie came in, would he switch and play defense? And once Jamie German decided he was going to play the split receiver, he was one happy coach. Well, delay of game against Miami will make it third and 17, but German, one of the most highly recruited high school football players in America last year, chose Miami over Syracuse, was the other finalist, but German, all kinds of athletic ability. He's also a smart young man and very competitive. 850 left third quarter, 14 zip hurricanes, and on third and long, Costa unloads. And has Chris Jones shy of a first down up at the 44-yard line. A 14-yard gain, but they needed 17. That'll bring up a fourth down and one for Miami. Frank Costa with the win at his back got it there, but not good enough for a first down. Well, this, this is a good, tough run after the catch, but the mistake that Chris Jones make here is that if you need 17 or 18 yards, you don't go 17, you go 21, 22, so you can come back to meet the ball. Like Chris, he just does get it away. Fair catch made by Antonio Freeman at the 20-yard line. A 36-yard boot for Chrissy. And with 8.34 left in the third quarter, Virginia Tech gets the football back here at the Orange Bowl, trailing 14 0. 14 0, and, and it's, it's forcing Virginia Tech to open up their offense, getting them out of that option. The one thing about a running football team is that once you get behind, it forces you to do something that you're not good at, and that's throwing the ball all the time. On first down, here's Dwayne Thomas. Thomas gets five to the 25-yard line. Terrace Harris, the free safety from Memphis, up to make the stop. There's Terrace, a preseason All-American, making his 12th career start today. Canes have made some changes on defense. Orwin Francis, one outside linebacker. James Burgess, a freshman from Homestead, the other. Baraka Short in a defensive end along with Kenny Holmes and Pat Riley in a tackle. 
Here's another tackle, by the way, by Ray Lewis. Knocking down Joe Swarm. Short pickup. And that'll bring up a third down and four. I'll tell you, Miami just have a history of, of getting those young linebackers or, or young backs that come in at a time of need and just play up to the expectations as if they were seniors coming into that position. Ray Lewis having a heck of a debut game. Third down and short with the way to swarm, and he will be short of the first down. Lost two on third down and two. Just a good job of game tackling. I, I think Swarm was able to break the first two tackles, and then Corin Francis and Carl Richardson came in and put the hat on him, stood him up, and in come the entire Hurricane defense before the play was dead. Good solid defense for the Hurricanes to force the Hokies to give up the football. Jonathan Harris awaits the Robbie Cowley punt. Just under seven minutes left, third quarter. Collie hits it from the 16. Air catch at the 39 for Jonathan Harris, and there is another penalty marker at the Miami 40-yard line. Three penalty markers down. a costly infraction for Miami. Illegal participation will give the football back to Virginia Tech with 6.46 to play. Third period. Hokies trailing 14 to nothing and gets second life. Oh, you know, once again, we talk about the mistakes and the penalties and here again, it comes back to hurt the Hurricanes with this illegal participation. And you know, you, you, you put your defense out there, they're playing good football, they stuff the Hokies, take it away, and then you have this, and now they're back on the field, and you wear your defense down. Three and out, that's what you want your defense to do. They did it, but for the mistake, they're back on the field again, and the Hokies got new life. With a first and 10 at their own 41-yard line. Brian Edmonds, Tommy Edwards, split back set. Now they switch back to the eye. This is Edwards. Good block by Antonio Freeman, the wide receiver, frees Edwards for a 12-yard gain on first down. Tommy Edwards. There is Harris running Edwards out of bounds, but Edwards with good size for a redshirt freshman out of Radford, Virginia, 6 feet to 12. Edwards has good size and also good speed, but here you see Rohan Marley takes the inside, gets logged in, and there's plenty of room for touchdown Tommy outside. Actually picked himself up 14 yards. His dad, Tommy Edwards, Ken, played at Virginia Tech, was a teammate of current Tech head coach Frank Beamer. Edwards again spinning for two inside the can, 45 to the 43-yard line. And again, Ray Lewis, number 52, I'm a stop. You will not find Lewis in the Miami media guide. He signed too late in July, was ticketed to go to Hargrave Military Academy, but he made his test scores. Jeffrey Taylor, another highly recruited linebacker from North Miami, did not qualify academically. So he took Ray Lewis's spot at Hargrave Military Academy, and Lewis carving out quite a niche here in game two of his freshman season. Second and eight, DeShazo finds Cornelius White for the first down catch at the 33 of Miami territory. First catch this season for Cornelius White, a redshirt freshman from Penadel, Pennsylvania. You know, DeShazo gives you that ability as a quarterback from running the option that he can also throw on the run, and they bring him out of the pocket to get him a little bit more separation where he can see downfield, and he hits his receiver wide open. DeShazo only threw for two yards on one completion in the first half. Hooked up with Cornelius White to gain 11 and a Virginia Tech first down. Here's Edwards. Nothing. That'll be a loss of two back at the 36-yard line. Warren Sapp, Darren Cryan. On the stop of Tommy Edwards, Cryan, the fifth-year senior from Aurora, Colorado. And Sapp. The exuberant sophomore from Plymouth, Florida. They just do a good job here getting penetration and refusing to be blocked. 
This is what you have to have to be a good defensive football team. And the key to the hurricane is that front four. They've got four solid players up front that can make plays. Ninth play of the drive, second and 13, complete. Catch made by Steve Sanders. He had one knee down at the 31-yard line, so they'll spot it dead right there, a gain of five. That'll bring up a third down and eight with five minutes to play here in the third period. Here you see just a little hitch route, and Sanders does the does the right thing in trying to make sure he get down on the ball, but in college football, once your knee touches down, you're down. On third and eight, Sanders wide to the right, Cornelius White in the slot. Here's Sanders in motion. The Shazo rolling wide side. And he has his man, Sanders, down at the 19-yard line. They'll mark it at the 18. Pickup of 13 yards, first down, Virginia Tech with four and a half left, third quarter. Steve Sanders, only 5'8", a senior from Virginia Beach. That was an excellent catch by Steve Sanders. Once again, you see the Shazzo, they're getting him outside. They're getting him where he's comfortable, and he shows you his athletic ability of being able to throw on the run with Sanders coming back, making the catch. Now, Virginia Tech going to give Big East foes their woes this year. This is a much improved football team. The Shazzo on first down, keeps it and loses a yard back at the 19. Ray Lewis, Rohan Marley, and number 90, Kenny Holmes, a redshirt freshman from Vero Beach, Florida. In on the stop, and the Shazo is hurt. Well, you can imagine the angst Frank Beamer must be feeling as he looks on from the Virginia Tech sideline. The Shazo is his key man. Right. You, you, I don't care who you're rooting for. You never want to see a kid down where Possibly he's injured and, and it's going to be put out of the ball game. Shazo was really starting to move this ball club, and he got his feet caught up on him as Kenny Holmes sort of bulldogged him down, and uh, hopefully uh, he's not hurt too bad. We'd like to see him get up and walk off. You never want to see any young man get hurt. Nope. He's not worth it. Frank Beamer walking out to take a look at his starting quarterback. Beamer played for Jerry Claiborne at Virginia Tech. Here, here's another look at the play. And as you can see, Kenny Holmes fights off, and he just grabs and he bulldogs him down with. Third quarter. And, that, you, you know, you get your knee caught up under you, especially on this turf, and he's up. He's up and walking off. That's a good sign, and, you know, we're happy for the Virginia Tech uh, ball club. We're glad to see it. DeShazo, the most highly recruited player to come to Virginia Tech in the Frank Beamer era. They beat Tennessee and Clemson to get this option quarterback out of Stewart, Virginia. He'll come out of the game on second down and 10, and in comes Jim Druckenmiller, a redshirt freshman from Northampton, Pennsylvania, who is just one for five in his college career. This will be the 11th play of Virginia Tech's drive. 14 nothing Miami, four minutes, five seconds left here in the third. Edmonds and Edwards, the running backs. This is Edwards, breaks away from Kevin Patrick, but not away from Lewis, Wayne Johnson, and Rohan Marley at the 21-yard line. This is really a tough position for freshmen to have to come into. You know, you're, you're, you're down here close, so you almost can gamble that he's not going to be throwing the football on this first play, and Miami does. Kevin Patrick comes across, stacks it up, in comes the remainder of the Hurricane defense. Third down and 13 for Virginia Tech. They have it at the Miami 21. Jim Druckenmiller at quarterback. Going for the end zone for Freeman. Picked off by Dexter Siegler. That is the fifth straight game that Siegler has come up with an interception. That ties the Miami record set by Benny Blades. A big play for the Hurricanes and for number 34, the senior Dexter Siegler. Dexter Siegler just did a, a fantastic job of playing possum. It was not his man, but he kept vision on the quarterback and he just played the ball in the air and went and got it. He wanted that fifth touchdown in, in um, fifth game in a row that he come up with an interception and he he went up and got it. 
The seventh career interception for Dexter Siegler. A year ago, his girlfriend gave him the nickname ABC, standing for America's best cornerback. ABC. 3-12 left, third quarter, 14 to nothing Miami, and Frank Costa gets it back at the 20. Here's Danielle Ferguson. That's a face mask call as Ferguson carries people to the 24, a gain of four, and I believe it will be a face mask penalty against Virginia Tech. J.C. Price, the guilty party with 3.05 left here in the third quarter. So here you see Ferguson has a hole, and J.C. Price does the only thing he can do to stop him is just reach out and he grabs the face mask, which is a no-no in college football or in any football. But uh, when you got a guy like Ferguson that can run, you can't allow him to get into the secondary. You know, that's a guy we haven't had a chance to talk much about today. You know, you, you expect to see him break open in a game like this and so far he hasn't been able to get out of the backfield you know he is the guy that they really feel will be their tailback as far as a breakaway runner an elusive runner and uh, he also catches the ball well coming out of the backfield well two game breakers in there Ferguson the eye tailback and the freshman Jamie German in the slot right on first down one yard to go Costa going deep for Jones sliding catch at midfield Pick up of 21, Chris Jones having a very nice afternoon. The junior out of West Palm reeling in another Frank Costa bullet. I think he jammed his uh, arm here, but I'll tell you, he, he's shown me a lot. He's shown a lot of character for a big guy that he's not he's not afraid to go down and get the ball. You see him going down low, catching the football, and, and Costa's throwed it where it had to be thrown, low and inside, where if his receiver doesn't catch it, no one can. Marcus Wimberly, A.C. Tellison, Jonathan Harris all flanked to the left on first and ten from the Hurricane 49. This is Bennett, and only marker down as Bennett picks up some tough inside yardage to the Virginia Tech 46. Five-yard pickup, but it may come back. And it will. In the middle, you'll see... As you look at your screen, you've got a hole with uh, K.C. Jones. Just reached out and tried to tackle the defensive tackle. And uh, this is the thing that they've got to get back and get corrected because when they start playing the Florida States, the Colorados, the Syracuse, they cannot self-destruct the way they're doing today and be successful. No question. They will have to play a much better game next weekend if they're to win at Colorado. First down and 18 for Miami at their own 41 with two minutes to play in the third quarter. A 14-0 lead for the Hurricanes. Here's Danielle Ferguson. Ferguson gets to the 45, maybe to the 46-yard line. George Del Rico, the inside linebacker, stopping Danielle. Pick up a four. And here's a look at the hurricane schedule. Colorado at Florida State and then Syracuse, the three biggest games in front of Dennis Erickson and his football team. Now they've got three big ball games in the next four, and that's why the mistakes that they're making today offensively, especially on that offensive line, they've got to get corrected. Otherwise, they won't have a chance against Colorado or Florida State or Syracuse. Well, that's why this was a critical tune-up game for Miami. The opener at BC, a bye week, and then this struggle with Virginia Tech to get Miami ready for the challenge that awaits them in Boulder, Colorado next Saturday night. Second down, 14. Wimberly, German, and Harris to the right. Cornell Brown blew off sides for Virginia Tech, number 58. The penalty offside against Virginia Tech. 
Yeah, that'll help Miami out just a bit with a minute and 11 left in the third quarter. And you can see Brown at the top of your picture dart across. Right here, he, they're good in man coverage, and they're coming after him once again. And he's just trying to get a quick start, and he just uh, jumped a little early. Thought he had a time. Second down nine for Miami. They'll go out of the shotgun. finally brought down at the 33 yard line brought down by the cornerback William Yarborough the gap of nearly 17 yards on the Costa to Jonathan Harris flip well Jonathan Harris is just wide home he he's he settles in there in the open area and he doesn't move through it and here you see his quickness of foot as he tries to make some moves, pick up some extra yardage. But, you know, Jonathan Harris is the guy that really had big shoes to fill. Everyone is expecting him to, to be the next Kevin Williams. And uh, he has that kind of ability. 20 seconds left, third quarter. On first down, quick flip. Harris slides in, makes the catch. And a late hit in the Miami backfield. will be whistled against Dwayne Knight. The blitzing linebacker for Virginia Tech who hit Costa after Frank unloaded the football. Penalty, 14-0 Miami, timeout here at the Orange Bowl, back on Sunshine Network in a moment. Remember the rules of the road, Andy said, as we steer towards Music City, USA. Keep plenty of the old mill up top and a real hit-kicking compilation of the country's greatest in the deck. Music so good, you'll forget the dials on the dash. The one thing about being out in the country, you never run out of folks willing to lend a hand. You boys need a ride. And just as long as you don't run dry of the old Milwaukee, it doesn't get any better than this. For a chance at 10 of the country's greatest hits, some hit-kicking music, check out an old Milwaukee display. The food's really good. Delicious. Love it. They pamper you too, I, I think. They're divine. It's the one place we agree on, the Olive Garden. They're fresh. So fresh, always so tasty. The variety is, is overwhelming. Excellent food. Yeah, I love the feta chain. It's marvelous. So many reasons to come back soon. The Olive Garden Italian restaurant. Hurricane football. Live the tradition as the Hurricanes battle Georgia Southern. For tickets, call 1-800-GO-CANE. With Nat Moore and Joe Rose down on the field, Eric Reed welcoming you back to the Orange Bowl. A pretty late afternoon, early evening here in Miami. Nice breeze blowing into the open end of the Orange Bowl. Hurricanes leading by two touchdowns, moving closer to their 29th consecutive regular season win and their 52nd in a row here at the place they call home. Well, right now, Miami will take a victory any way they can get it. It's not pretty, but uh, they do have command of the game and an opportunity to go in and score and uh, build on that lead. First and 10 at the Tech 18. Again, penalty markers flying. And that ball flying through the hands of Chris Jones at the 10-yard line. Well, this game has been penalty marred. Both clubs making too many mistakes. Scott Jones, the right side corner, still down for Virginia Tech. This is a thinning secondary. They were without two starters today. Tyrone Drakeford, their best defensive back. And Antonio Banks, they're starting free safety. Penalty is an offsides call against Virginia Tech. So Miami will get it first down and five. And it should be at the Virginia Tech 13-yard line. Well, the last 20 yards or so has been uh, credited to Virginia Tech. They're helping Miami keep the drive alive and, and, and move down the field by making mistakes. And it's a real sloppy ball game, Eric, but... You know, what are you going to do? Miami's had two weeks off or had a week off, so they've had that off week, and sometimes you lose that sharpness with the off week. Hopefully this game will help them get it back for next week in Colorado, but 
They've got to become a better football team. I hate to keep harping on that, but uh, we're so used to seeing great football here in Miami that uh, I expect to see that next week. Well, it was Lawrence Lewis, number 56, that bolted off sides for Virginia Tech. And that's how Scott Jones banged the right knee. And he is being helped off to the Virginia Tech sideline. Let's go downstairs. Another edition of Joe's World. <laughs> Thank you very much, Eric. Well, do you recognize this face or not? Yes, it's not NFL Day. Minnesota has the week off. This is Gino Toretta, the Heisman Trophy winner, quarterback of the Hurricanes a year ago. Gino, nice to have you here today. Oh, thanks. It's, uh, it's nice to be back in the Orange Bowl. You know, we got a week off, so I get a little time off. We're just talking. It's nice to see somebody else taking all those blitzes today. How do you think Frank's doing at this point? He's doing all right. I think they got to put, put a little more points on the board. But, uh, you know, as usual, the defense is playing real well to, to, you know, to get the offense going. I'm sure in a couple weeks, you know, everything will be clicking real well. Last year, looking back, uh, going from college to the pros, what's the big difference you've seen so far? I think, you know, as far as we have a lot of great athletes down here, but offensively and defensive line, I mean, you see the best athletes in the NFL, guys that are just incredible, and uh, I think that's the biggest difference. Okay, Gino, good luck to you. Guys, back up to you. Thanks very much, Joe Rose. We are through three quarters here at the Orange Bowl, which is just west of downtown Miami. We're just minutes away from the fourth quarter and a 14-0 Miami lead against Virginia Tech. Before you buy your next car, you could test it like this. Or you can read consumer reports. Before you buy your next washer or dryer, you could test it like this. Or you can read consumer reports. Consumer reports test brand name products every day to tell you which models were worth the money and which were not. And now you can put Consumer Reports to the test with a risk-free trial issue. Consumer Reports gives you independent test results on vehicles, refrigerators, TVs, blue jeans, auto insurance, and more. We tell you the brand names and give you the model numbers to help you get better value for your dollar. Call now for your risk-free trial issue. If you like it, pay just $22 for 11 more issues, 12 in all, plus the 1994 buying guide. Or write cancel on the bill, return it, and owe nothing. You'll also get the 1993 buying guide free with your paid subscription. Call 1-800-652-2112. Call now to put us to the test. At La Quinta Inns, our most frequent guests are traveling salesmen. So we asked a few how they'd sell La Quinta. You look like a person on the go, am I right? You're a VIP kind of guy, am I right? You don't have time for some fancy smancy breakfast, am I right? At La Quinta, they've customized a free continental breakfast for busy guys like yourself. In fact, this blueberry muffin was baked with you in mind. La Quinta, you're not staying at a hotel, you're staying with us. Most trackers can follow the trail only as long as the weather holds out. Unless it's a tracker spurred on with genuine AC spark plugs. AC plugs fire faster than lightning for performance so smooth, even the thunder claps. And that'll keep your engine on the trail to a longer life. AC Delco. It's like buying time. Now through September 30th, save up to $11.60 on AC spark plugs and filters. Sweet it has been at the Orange Bowl over the last seven plus years for Miami. They've won 51 in a row here and heading towards number 52 as we begin the fourth quarter. Eric Reed, Nat Moore, and Joe Rose. And what a third period for Frank Costa. He goes seven of eight for 90 yards in the third quarter for the day. 18 of 32, 268 yards. And his top receiver, Chris Jones, having the best day of his young Miami career. Six receptions, 108 yards. That's just a, a fantastic day, especially when your offense is struggling and you need to make some big plays. And uh, Chris Jones has stepped forward in, in the second half, so uh, Frank Costas has done as well. Two touchdowns on the board for Miami. A one-yard Larry Jones run back in the first quarter, capping a 20-play, 85-yard drive. Longest drive for a Miami team since the Notre Dame game in 1989. Second touchdown for the Canes came back in the third quarter on the 45-yard hookup between Costa and A.C. Tellison. First play of the fourth quarter. Second down and two at the Hokie 10. 
This is the fullback, Derek Harris, straight ahead, all the way down to the three-yard line. Derek Harris, the former linebacker from Willow Ridge, Texas, hard to bring down. That's and Brown finally stopped him. That's just good, hard running at the point of attack. You got the offensive line coming off the football, and he just decided he's going to make a hole as he runs through Ken Brown, drags him for another three, four yards, and gets it down to the three-yard line. Excellent run by Derek Harris. Who is excited about it? I would say a tad. Harris, the up back. Bennett, the eye tailback on first and goal from the three. Harris to the two-yard line, and that is all. George Del Rico, J.C. Price. First to get there. Del Rico showing some toughness playing with the shoulder injury. Got an assist from Ken Brown. On this play, the Hokies come with the uh, slants where everybody's coming down, knowing that Miami would like to run it up the middle again after the success of the uh, the first run by Harris. The thing I'd like to see Miami do, and uh, they haven't shown it yet, is from that eye, show some speed as far as one guy running to the corner of the end zone. Maybe we'll get that here. On second and goal from the two, the eye tailback for speedy Danielle Ferguson. Ferguson gets inside the one. Stacy Henley, the, the safety, along with William Yarborough making the stop. So it'll be third and goal from inside the one for Miami. Just underway here in quarter four. Third ranked Miami in a struggle, leading 14 to nothing. I'll tell you though, they're, they're really finding it tough to put the ball in the end zone down here. They've had it down here a couple times inside the 10 yard line, and it's not been a cakewalk. You see the Virginia Tech, uh, Hokies do a good job here. You see Green, you see Henley coming in, and they just string it out till Pursuit gets there and keeps them from getting it in. Nice stop made there by number 37, Marcus McClung. On third and goal. Derek Harris into the end zone. It looked like he dove in. They say he came up short, and penalty markers are down. Now this Virginia Tech defense, Nat Moore, showing us here at the Orange Bowl, tons of heart. It'll be fourth and goal, inches away from the Virginia Tech end zone. Well, last year we had a team from Arizona come in here, and they also made the Hurricanes look ugly. But when it was all over with, we found out that Arizona was a good football team, and you have to wonder if this Virginia Tech Hokie football team is not a very talented team, as you see Dennis Harrison looking on here. On fourth and goal, Harris ducks in, dives in, and gets in. Touchdown, Miami. Derek Harris, a yard out, gets his first touchdown as a Miami Hurricane, and it's 20 to nothing. Here, here's a good job by the offensive line of just holding their ground, and you see a little torpedo come through there. That's that's Harris, Robert Harris, just getting it over. He didn't get it in by much. Well, Dane Pruitt hasn't missed yet on a point after this season. Out of the hold of Chrissy. Straight through there. 12 minutes, 14 seconds left in our football game today at the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. The third-ranked Hurricanes for the first time today with some breathing room. We'll be right back here on Sunshine Network. What day is it today, Max? Brady! Brady, you there? Rosie, you're just in time. Problem is, Brady, I got a bad front rolling in. Bad? What do you Best mean? Best I can do is drop one thing. One. What's it gonna be, Brady? Hey. There are some things people will do just about anything for. Smooth, refreshing strobes. It's not just any beer. Get your next time, Brady. It's strobes. Any requests? Pretzels. If you like college football as much as I do, you're going to love Florida Pigskins. It's the new magazine featuring Florida's big three, the Gators, the Hurricanes, and the Seminoles. A season preview, the superstars, the strongest players, pigskin trivia, and much, much more. It's exciting news you can't find on the sports page. Pick up a Florida Pigskin at any newsstand or call 1-800-4-PIGSKIN and order your subscription today. Florida Pigskin, for the football fan who can't get enough.
Miami Hurricane football. Live the tradition as the Hurricanes battle Georgia Southern. For tickets, call 1-800-GO-CANE. Welcome back to Prime Network. Because of time constraints, we must move ahead in the contest. When we return, we'll have more action on Prime Network. College football, the lifeblood of sports in the Southeast. Every week, preview the top conferences, the big names, and the key matchups on Southern Football Saturday. Saturdays at 11 on Sunshine Network. Would you? Recently, the TV networks and Congress came up with a rather unusual good neighbor policy. It seems that a year from now, if certain networks get their way, cable customers will have to pay for programming that their neighbors without cable will continue to get free. It's like a network tax. Tell them you don't want to pay it. Tell the networks you're not going to pay for free TV. Cast your vote for free TV. Call 1-800-FREE-TV-3. Three reasons why more people choose Massey's Pest Prevention. One is our quality people and the training we give them. The second reason is the fact that we simply tell people what we're going to do, and we do it. Third and finally, we back up everything that we say with a guarantee that says, if you're not completely satisfied with what we do, you get your money back. Massey's Pest Prevention. When you compare, there is no comparison. Ride on the wild side. It's motorcycles' hottest runs from around the globe with the World Grand Prix Tour and the AMA Road Racing Series. Get on the fast track. Cycle World, Thursdays at 9 on Sunshine Network. A 21-0 lead for third-ranked Miami against Virginia Tech. Nine and a half to play here in the fourth quarter. Eric Reed with Nat Moore and Joe Rose. At last, Miami scoring drive. Covered 10 plays, 80 yards. The Hurricanes holding it for nearly six minutes. Their second scoring drive of the day, Matt, that covers 80 yards or more. 80 yards, but uh, the big play was the 20-yard uh, reception by Chris Jones, and you know, that's what they're, they're living on the pass again today. Last week or two weeks ago, it was the rush that helped them. Here's your game summary. Larry Jones capping the 85-yard 20-play first quarter drive. A.C. Tellison with a big 45-yard strike from Costa. And it's been a pretty good afternoon for Miami's junior quarterback. Rattled early with the Virginia Tech blitzes. He settled down, had an excellent third quarter. Here's Larry Jones. Nice run for the fullback out of Gainesville up to the 24-yard line. That's a 13-yard pickup for Larry Jones. Finally brought down of a free safety, Torian Gray. And Larry Jones shows you some nifty footwork here as he goes through the mill. He just does a good job of keeping his feet moving and making people miss him right up the mill. You'll see the two or three defenders have a shot. Brown misses him, steps through the tackle. There's a corner coming in, missing him. Just does a good job, which you don't expect from a big man like Larry Brown. First and 10 for the Canes, their own 25. Bennett and Jones in for protection. And Costa looking to... Jamie German running step for step alongside with Stacy Henley. There was contact, but no flag. Well, I think that's something that uh, Jamie German is going to learn is that, you know, you don't get tied up with the corner. You, you, you do what you have to do to get away from him. And, you know, the reason I think they didn't call interference was they felt the ball was uncatchable. What do you see, Nat Moore, when you look at the young thoroughbred Jamie German? I see a kid that has so much ability, but the quarterback, uh, Henley, just does a good job of forcing him out of bounds and not letting him get by him. That's good defensive play there. 8.53 to play in this game, and a second and 10 for Miami. And that ball thrown behind Jonathan Harris. That'll bring up third down and 10. Frank Costa dumped by George Del Rico. Word from the hurricane sideline, Ricky Perry, the big tackle. He'll not be back in, cramping in the legs. Costa takes another good hit off Del Rico, and uh, he and Jonathan Harris read the blitz, but just wasn't able to connect. Go, baby, go, baby! Jason Boudroni in at the tackle spot for Ricky Perry. Boudroni, a 290-pound fifth-year senior from Philadelphia. third and ten. Chris 
Jones, the juggling bid, but he couldn't hold on. It has been a career day for Chris Jones with six catches, 108 yards. That's the second ball he's juggled and dropped. Well, I, I think Chris Jones ended up in an area that he wasn't supposed to be in, either he or Jonathan Harris, because you'll see the two receivers come together, and Jonathan Harris is wide open and was going to make the catch, and Chris Jones came across. I take that back. I'm just looking at the replay. I think Jonathan Harris is supposed to clear through. And it was Chris Jones' ball to catch. In a crowd, Chrissy unloads with a beautiful punt, sending Freeman back to his own 32-yard line. 38-yard boot with plenty of hang time. And with 8.34 to play here in the fourth quarter, Frank Cust and the Hurricanes lead Virginia Tech 21 to nothing here on Sunshine Network. Remember the rules of the road, Andy said, as we steer towards Music City, USA. Keep plenty of the old mill up top, and a real hit-kicking compilation of the country's greatest in the deck. Music so good, you'll forget the dials on the dash. But one thing about being out in the country, you never run out of folks willing to lend a hand. You boys need a ride. And just as long as you don't run dry of the old Milwaukee, it doesn't get any better than this. For a chance at 10 of the country's greatest hits, some hit-kicking music, check out an old Milwaukee display. Just because one thing goes wrong, doesn't mean it won't cause a lot of other things to go wrong. That's why there's the First Union Reality Check. The hassle-free loan that helps you catch whatever curve life's throwing at you today. First Union introduces the Reality Check. The hassle-free loan that helps life run a little more smoothly. Hurricane football. Live the tradition as the Hurricanes battle Georgia Southern. For tickets, call 1-800-GO-CANE. 34 left in the football game. The Hurricanes leading at 21 to nothing. Dennis Erickson is substituted liberally with his defense here in the final quarter. Now we invite you to join host Tony Segreto for the Dennis Erickson Show. Sunday, September 26th at 10 a.m. for all the latest scores and highlights of Hurricane football. We hope you'll tune in. With Joe Rose and Nat Moore, a pair of former Dolphins, I'm Eric Reed. as we look at Dennis Erickson, and we turn the page to defense for Miami, leading by three touchdowns. Maurice DeShazo shaking off the injury, back in at quarterback. The end around to Antonio Freeman, and plenty of room. First down, and lots more for Freeman, for the 30, and brought down at the 28-yard line by James Burgess, the freshman outside linebacker, and the Hurricanes were fooled. Virginia Tech just does a good job of taking advantage of that aggressive Miami defense in the pursuit, and they just got everybody out in front, and here you see Freeman, he's off to the races, and if it hadn't been for Burgess making that great recovery coming back, he would have scored a touchdown. Gain of 37 yards, first and 10. Here comes Tommy Edwards. Ran right in the Carl Richardson and Corwin Francis. And after that big pickup, the Hurricanes have put their first defensive unit back in. Right. They, they caught him with the young, young defense in there, and they were a little over aggressive and didn't take care of their own responsibility by staying home and keeping everything inside of them. And uh, Antonio Freeman was able to get down the sideline on the reverse. 55,753 in attendance at the Orange Bowl, and they are rooting hard for the shutout. 7.35 to play, 21 nothing Miami, and a second down and nine for Tech. At the Hurricane, 29. The Shazo in trouble. Gets it away, juggling bid, incomplete, intended for the tight end, John Burke. Corwin Francis shot through, and the outside linebacker put the heavy heat on DeShazo. I don't understand how he was able to get that ball off. You know, it was just a great execution. Just a you know, guy here that 
you know, is a little hobbled. He's hit, and he's still able to get it off, and he almost completes it. So you have to give DeShazo a lot of credit of not quitting and not going down for the easy sack. Well, DeShazo has a streak on the line. He's thrown at least one touchdown pass in seven consecutive games. It is Virginia Tech Hokies who are averaging 48 points a game through their first two weeks. Still scoreless with 7-21 remaining. And a third down and nine here at the Kane 28. On the draw, this is Edmonds, breaks a tackle. And very close to the first down at the Miami 20. Dexter Siegler and Corwin Francis stopping Brian Edmonds, but a good run as he shed the initial tackle. Good play calling by Coach Bremer. Knowing that Miami's going to come after him with a little pressure, they come with the draw, and they come close to getting 10 yards for the first down. Brings up a big play. Fourth down and one at the Hurricane 20. Tommy Edwards, the deep tailback. Edmonds in front. On the option, they bottle it up and bring DeShazo down. Rohan Marley. Blew the play open for the Miami defense. He was on the Shazo almost instantly. Rohan was coming on a weak side blitz, and they were running away from him, and he, the Shazo never saw him, and he came in and made the tackle from behind before they could get turned upfield. Big play by Rohan Marley. Here you see, comes from the backside. They were coming after him all the way. They are trying to pre preserve the shutout, and uh, they put that first unit in to make sure there. Rohan Marley and number 58, Corwin Francis, who had a standout day two weeks ago at Boston College. But a big play to help preserve the shutout. And these Hurricane fans do appreciate the defense. They're accustomed to great defense around here, and linebacker U, as they call it. Frank Costa still in. First and 10 at the 24. Swings it out complete to Derek Harris. And he is stopped back at the 20, so that's a four-yard loss. And let's go down to the Miami sideline. Joe Rose standing by. Thank you guys very much. If you've played in the Orange Bowl or you've been a fan and been able to watch a game here, you know how loud it can get at the closed end of the Orange Bowl. Just now on fourth down, the quarterback for Virginia Tech, I'll guarantee you, unable to hear anything at all. It's very, very loud today at the Orange Bowl. Back up to you guys. Arsenio and Letterman look out. Joe Rose is on his way. He's got it going, doesn't he? Second and 13 for the Hurricanes. Under six minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Nice juggling attempt, but Al Shipman couldn't hold on. The redshirt freshman out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Well, Virginia Tech. Back to it next week, they'll play against Maryland. Here you see Costa steps up, throws the ball with one that should be caught, and he's a little frustrated there, but you know, as a quarterback, you gotta keep your head. You, you, you can't get upset when they drop them because there's gonna be times when they're open, you're not gonna be able to get it to them. Those are the numbers accounted for by Costa. Third down and 13. Look at the blitz coming. Oh, he's leveled, fumbled football. And I believe Waverly Jackson, number 98 of Virginia Tech, recovered it. A delayed blitz from the corner by Larry Green. There is a penalty marker down. And it's offsides against Virginia Tech. Boy, Costa was leveled. That was a big play by Larry Green as he comes on that corner, delayed blitz. Once again, Costas does not see him, and he's hit from the blind side. Ball shook loose. Waverly Jackson recovers it, but to no avail, they were offside. Larry Green running a straight line right to Frank Costa. Nobody ever picked him up. Well, you know, the key on that play, and, and they've used it twice, that defensive scheme, is that you know that he's going to come free, but it's up to the quarterback to see that free blitzer and get rid of the football. But he's never looking to that backside because he doesn't have a receiver over there, so he ignores the cornerback, and that's how he's getting tricked every time. Under five and a half minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Third down, eight for Miami at their own 26. Bennett behind Costa. Look out. 
Lawrence Lewis coming from the right side defensive end and Costa's sack back at the 17. There will be some tough moments for the coaching staff and players when they look at some of these films. And once again, the defensive line just, I mean, the offensive line just gets manhandled and you've got free blitzers and you know, that time they really didn't have a big blitz on. They just beat the offensive lineman and was able to get in and make the tackle or the sack. Antonio Freeman. Oh, punt was blocked. And Virginia Tech looking to recover it in the end zone. They can't fall out of the end zone. Virginia Tech blocking Mike Chrissy's punt. And that will be a safety. So the shutout goes by the boards. Virginia Tech gets two on the block. Here you see the block, but the guy that really does a good job of coming back and trying to keep Virginia Tech from recovering it for a touchdown is Donnell Bennett, the fullback. You'll see him hustling into the pitcher here and helps knock the ball out of bounds so that it's only a two-point safety versus a six-point touchdown. Good hustle by Donnell Bennett. Well, the man that blocked the punt was Willie Wilkins, number 38. A freshman out of Boynton Beach, Florida. Another Florida product that uh, would like to show good here in South Florida. And, you know, they've been close several times and they finally got to him. That's uh, something else that I think Coach Arnold is going to uh, go over kind of vividly in the uh, film discussion. Uh, I would hate to be in the Hurricanes uh, meetings next week. Odd score and a weird football team. A weird football game, I should say. 21 to 2, Miami leading by 19. And let's flip the page in history. Back at the Orange Bowl in the glory days, Nat Moore hauling in the touchdown from Dan Marino. And Joe Rose out of Stanford. Made an impact as a Miami Dolphin. Look at the hands. Moore, a leader when he played, and even now. Two great former Dolphins, one-time teammates, and again on the same club. I can't believe I was ever that young. <laughs> Those were great days, I tell you. When you think of the Orange Bowl, you've got a lot of fond memories, and that's one reason the Hurricanes are so successful here. It's a great tradition playing here in the Orange Bowl. From the 20-yard line after the safety, Barnwell. To Dwayne Thomas at the 25. And Dwayne Thomas with a nice head of steam in the hurricane territory at the 47-yard line. Earl Little, the freshman from North Miami, bringing him down. And we could get a look at a very talented young man if the Hurricanes get the football back. That's Ryan Collins, the sophomore from Miami Hialeah Lakes and a very solid performer. Well, Coach Erickson has uh, talked all summer that uh, Ryan Collins, he would not be afraid to go with him if uh, Frank Costas was to stumble at all. So hopefully we'll get our first look at him today. Jim Druckenmiller, the quarterback, pitches to Tommy Edwards, Baraka Short, and Antonio Coley, along with Carlos Jones, stopping Edwards back at his own 47-yard line. That's a loss of five yards. Here's Antonio Coley, former strong safety, converted the linebacker. Coley went to American High School in Miami. So the day is over for Maurice DeShazo, who wasn't able to get much going against this Miami defense. Big sack for Burgess, free football, still free. Looks like the Hurricanes have got it. A jarring hit by freshman James Burgess. And Booker Pickett has the free football. The redshirt freshman from Zephyr Hills, Florida. So we will see Ryan Collins even sooner than we anticipated. Well, I think this is also something that a lot of fans have been waiting to see. But here you see Burgess comes and quarterback really never sees him in a big hit. And here's the mistake that most line, defensive linemen make. They try and pick it up first instead of getting on the football. But Pickett comes in, 
and comes down with the football for him. That's a linebacker's dream, a blind side hit to the back of the quarterback. 3.45 to play here in the fourth quarter. Hurricanes leading it 21-2. And Ryan Collins on the run, fires incomplete. That is one thing that Collins can do, get away from pressure and fire accurately on the run. Right, he has the ability to scramble. He's a 4-5 sprinter, and he throws well on the run, but he's also a good drop-back passer that with a lot of accuracy. Uh, there you saw his ability to get away from the blitz, and you know that's something that Miami has had a problem with today that uh, he gives you, the ability to avoid the, bl the free blitzer and make something happen. You see Gerald Daphnis in at a tight end spot. He lines up to the left. Marcus Wimberly, Jamie German to the right. Out of the ice set on second and ten. This is James Stewart. Nice block. First down Stewart. Stewart still on his feet. Finally run out of bounds. Just inside the 15-yard line. A 19-yard run for James Stewart sweeping left. Here you see James Stewart as he sees this hole. You see him just jump through it, little move, and it's straight up field. No nonsense running. Good running by James Stewart. And this is a guy that, in talking with Coach Erickson, he really likes this kid. Last year, this kid was going to play some, and he got hurt, and they decided to redshirt him. And they're, so they're looking forward to big things out of James Stewart. Yeah, and he's a big fella, six foot three, 235 pounds. And fast. Fast. The important ingredients. Wimberly wide right in the slot. Jamie German. And the Hurricanes didn't get it snapped in time. Delay of the game with 329 left in the game. One of the things that separates this Hurricane program from the pack is the depth of talent. So even late in football games, plenty to watch. Ryan Collins getting some much awaited playing time. Jamie German getting unwrapped as a collegiate player for the first time. So still plenty to look at. Well, you know, the Hurricanes uh, team is so talented. When you lose your entire linebacking core, your entire receiving core, and you bring in guys that are red shirt juniors, that means they've got a lot of experience. And they're proving it today how important it is to have that kind of talent where you can redshirt them. Free play because Virginia Tech came off sides. Bernard Basham facing Ryan Collins around, as did Jeff Holland. Now James Stewart's going to be whistled for a penalty as he went to protect Ryan Collins. But continue on your point now. Well, you know, Miami has, has had the beauty and the luxury of being able to redshirt their freshmen and give them time to not only get acclimated to the college life, but also to learn the university's football system. So therefore, when a guy comes in to play as a junior, as a sophomore, you know, he's ahead of the game. He's got a couple years of experience. Plus, if you're an offensive player, you're practicing every day against one of the best defenses in football, in college football. Yeah. So, there's incredible leadership among the players in this program. I mean, the young guys learn from the veterans. James well, here's Stewart. something where James Stewart really didn't learn to keep his composure. The play is over, uh, tempers are flaring, but you've got to be able to walk away. This is something the University of Miami has been trying to get a better hold, hand on and control it a little bit better. And all you do is hurt yourself. You're getting a chance to play some. You just had a big play. Now you're out of the ball game. You hurt yourself as well as you hurt your ball club. And, you know, that's what these young guys have got to realize is that in a crucial ball game, you've got to control your temper. James Stewart ejected from the football game. But if you're going to come to the University of Miami to play football, you'd better be two things. Very talented and patient. Extremely patient because everybody there is talented. you got to wait your turn to put on the orange jersey and play for these Miami Hurricanes. Ryan Collins getting a chance to play some here with three minutes left in the fourth quarter. First down and 26, and Collins goes down back at the 35-yard line. Number 56, Lawrence Lewis, along with Cornell Brown, putting the heat on Ryan Collins. There will be plenty for Miami to work on during the week ahead before they go out to meet the Colorado Buffaloes. Cordell Stewart, 
an excellent quarterback for Colorado. He's got a game-breaking wide receiver in Michael Westbrook. And the Hurricanes will have their hands full next weekend in Boulder. Well, once again, the, the key today was keeping DeShazzo on the sideline. And you know, that's what they're going to have to do up in Colorado. But to do that, they've got to get this offensive line blocking corrected. On second and 31, look at the room for Donnell Bennett spinning to the 15-yard line. That's a 20-yard gain for Donnell Bennett, finally brought down by Ken Brown, the junior linebacker from Richmond, Virginia. Miami's offense just spread them out, got, got a hat on everybody up front, and got Donnell Bennett in the open field. And here, you'd like to see him just lower his head and run instead of doing all the dancing. You know, he's not a really a nifty guy. But he's a very strong guy that can break tackle, so you'd rather see him just go and try and break the tackle instead of trying to make folks miss him. By the way, Frank Costa ended his outing 19 for 37, 265 yards, one touchdown. Third and 11 for German. Got it! To the one-yard line, Jamie German, a 14-yard reception from Ryan Collins. I think that's a combination of the future. Ryan Collins to Jamie German, as, as you can see. Collins has that strong enough arm that he could throw that college out where he can get it out there and Jamie German did a good job of locating the ball, catching it, turning up field, trying to get it in the end zone. Well, Hurricane fans getting to know both Ryan Collins and Jamie German here in the waning moments. Yeah, here we see a good throw outside on the quick out. Larry Green with a touchdown saving tackle. First down and goal from the one with a minute 23 left here in the fourth quarter. Hurricanes leading 21 to 2. Here's Bennett. And Bennett will lose two yards back to the three-yard line. And the Hurricane offense has really bogged down that inside the five. Well, I, I think that that's a play right there where that was not a two-yard loss play. You know, here, here's an opportunity. They've outside. You've got blockers out front. You've got to run. You can't be dancing down around the five-yard line because the pursuit is coming. Hurricanes have sent Derek Harris and Larry Jones into the power eye set. Danielle Ferguson, the tailback. Second down and goal. And Ferguson is buried back at the nine-yard line. J.C. Price had help. That looked like a jailbreak for Virginia Tech. They were all over Ferguson. J.C. Price came loose un untouched. As you see, the guard, Rudy Barber, starts to pull. No one picks up Price, so he's right there. He almost can take the handoff from uh, Ryan Collins on this play. No one touched him. J.C. Price, a 275-pound sophomore defensive tackle from Dunkirk, Maryland. We've got a timeout to Virginia Tech with 43 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Here at the Orange Bowl, the Hurricanes leading it 21 to 2. This will be the 52nd consecutive win at the Orange Bowl for Miami. We'll be back for the finish right after this. The Miami Hurricanes. Nobody plays better than they do. And nobody but nobody covers the Canes better than Canesport. 21 times a year, Canesport takes you inside the locker room and inside the coaches' minds for the most comprehensive coverage anywhere. Each issue brings you complete game analysis, exciting action photos, and more. To order Canesport, call 1-800-635-CANE. Or by mail, send 3195 to Canesport, Miami, Florida. Canesport. Don't miss an issue. Order now. Anheuser-Busch Family Fitness Weekend is heading your way. Fun-filled events include running, inline skating, adult and kid-sized sprint triathlons, and more. The Family Fitness Weekend is coming to Panama City Beach September 25th and 26th at Jelly Bean Skate Park. We've got something for everyone in your active family. For entry information on the Anheuser-Busch Family Fitness Weekend, call Exclusive Sports Marketing at 407-241-3801 today. Miami's going to win its second football game in as many tries and go to 2-0 in the Big East Conference as well. Virginia Tech will drop to 2-1. and 
and they'll be one and one in Big East play, but this is a performance that has had its flaws for the Hurricanes. Well, this is not a pretty victory for them, but they'll take the W in the win column and accept the 52 straight at home, but they've got a lot of corrections to make this week in practice. Third down and goal from the nine-yard line for Ryan Collins and the Hurricanes with 43 seconds left in the game. Collins for the end zone over the head of Al Shipman. But you saw the athletic ability that Ryan Collins possesses, able to buy himself time while rolling out. Right. When he gets pressure in the pocket, you see him come out of there, and he has that speed where... He just outrun the defenders and gives himself a chance to, to try and just lob it over the defender's head just a little too far for Shipman. Miami will go for it here on fourth down and goal from nine yards away. 35 seconds left in the home opener. Virginia Tech ought to have a much more wide open game next weekend against Maryland. They put points on the board. In large doses, that should be a good one. Miami will play at Colorado next Saturday afternoon. A 3.30 Eastern time start. And Ryan Collins calls for time. I think uh, the clock had ran down and he wasn't going to be able to get the playoff, so he called for time. But, you know, you have to wonder from a coaching standpoint, how they're going to uh, make the adjustments on that offensive line because not only did they not get the job done blocking wise but they also gave up a lot of penalties for holding and etc and you know if you always think that a good football team uh, pass blocking wise or run blocking wise they hold they all hold so I don't fault them for that but when you're not getting any movement at the point of attack you can't run the football. And then if you're, if you're also getting sacked or getting pressure on the quarterback and you're also getting penalties, you're in trouble. Well, we hope you'll be with us this week's edition of Miami Dolphins Monday Night Magazine with Paul Kennedy. You can call in toll-free and talk with linebacker John Grimsley, running back Mark Higgs. That's this Monday night, live at 7 p.m., only here on Sunshine Network. Well, they'll preview the big game against the Buffalo Bills coming up next weekend. But for us watching the Hurricanes after two football games, still hard to get a read on just how good this 1993 edition is. I think they have the talent, but uh, the question mark is the offensive line and the penalties. 35 seconds to play in our football game at the Orange Bowl. Fourth and goal from the nine. nine. Ryan Collins. Going to throw it. And it's intercepted by Ken Brown in the end zone. And Brown rumbles out to the five-yard line. They'll give the Virginia Tech defense a tip of the hat. They played with heart and courage all afternoon. They didn't quit. They stayed after it. Uh, you know, this is going to help them. They can walk out of here with their heads up. And here you see Ryan Collins coming out to his right. And he's got plenty of time because of that mobility. And he waves his, his receiver back into traffic, which is a no-no. You cannot throw the ball back in there. And Brown comes down with the interception. He did better putting it under his arm and trying to run it in at that point. Ken Brown had three picks a year ago. That's his first interception of his junior season. 22 seconds to play. And the Hurricanes, although they'll be happy with the win, they won't be too happy. This game very sloppy in segments for Miami, but they will move to 2-0. Larry Jones with a one-yard touchdown run today. Derek Harris also going in from a yard out. A.C. Tellison with a 45-yard touchdown catch. Those are the three hurricane touchdowns. They do get their 29th consecutive regular season win and their 52nd W in a row here at the Orange Bowl. Dennis Erickson and Frank Beamer meet at midfield, but I would guess some mixed emotions for Mr. Erickson. Well, I, I would think that uh, Dennis is, is a little frustrated at this point. You know, he came in, he thought that his running game was going to be uh, excellent this year, and th they just weren't able to run the football. You have to give the Virginia Tech uh, defensive line and linebacker some credit for that, but offensively, they just were not coming off the ball and knocking people back. Well, the Virginia Tech Hokies, along with Boston College and West Virginia, 
in that three-team pack to finish perhaps in third place in the Big East behind Miami and Syracuse. Virginia Tech, they thought this game would be a bit of a gauge for them to where their program was at. Good news for them. They hung in and competed today for the nation's third-ranked team. Be interesting to find out the reaction of Dennis Erickson to this football game. He's standing by with our Joe Rose. Let's go downstairs. Thank you very much, Eric. And that, uh, Coach Erickson, a tough win today. Virginia Tech obviously much improved from a year ago. Early in the ball game, a lot of blitzes, but defensively, uh, a great uh, outing for the team. Well, we played great on defense, and uh, offensively, we didn't play very well. Uh, uh, they blitzed us early, brought eight up, and really created some problems for us. They did a good job. you got to give them credit. Finally, made some adjustments at halftime, got some big plays, but uh, obviously, we got a long ways to go offensively. They took the running game away from us and uh, forced us to throw, and they came after us every down, and obviously, we got to make some adjustments. But defensively, you can't be any happier than, than, than how we play. It's funny. Field position, uh, Virginia Tech really had great field position, especially in the first half of this ball game. Defensively, the guys got it done for you. Well, they did, and, uh, and the kid punted the ball down inside the five-yard line or ten-yard line a number of times, and they did a good job in their kicking game. We were awful in our kicking game, which is uh, pretty obvious, too. So, I mean, uh, two out of three wasn't too good, and the <laughs> third one was good enough for us to win. But uh, you know, if we're going to compete with Colorado, we got to get a heck of a lot better. Right, were you surprised to see Virginia Tech blitz as much as they did, uh, especially in the first half? Not really, because I, I knew that they were going to – they had to do something, you know, to, to get after us. And when teams do that, you're going to get big plays, and – and, you, and they're going to get some big plays, and uh, I've been involved in that. I didn't think they were going to come at us quite like that. They did right. some new things to us that we hadn't seen and had to make some adjustments. But uh, uh, we won the football game. Now we got to get ready to play Colorado, and uh, you know, who knows? Is there a chance, and you hate to say this, is there a chance the guys are looking ahead possibly uh, do next week against Colorado? I don't think so. I just think that Virginia Tech played well, and uh, you got to give them credit. But uh, now it, now it is next week, so what the heck, we, we just got to play better. All right, congratulations again, and good luck next week, Coach. Hey, Joe, and uh, have you got a date lately? Not lately. Thank you very much. Back up to you guys. Well, nice to know that even Dennis knows the reputation of one Joe Rose. Night, night falls in Miami, lights out on another Hurricane opponent. We'll be right back. Final score here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. The Hurricanes ranked third in the country. They had to battle Virginia Tech, but they win it 21-2. And our Sunshine Network player of the game tonight, the quarterback from Philadelphia, Frank Costa. 19 of 37, 265 yards, and a 45-yard touchdown strike to A.C. Tellison. Right here he hits A.C. after looking left and then throwing right, but in the second half when the Hurricanes needed a big lift, he was able to get it going and lead them to victory. It was, though, Nat Moore, an uneven game especially on the offensive side for the Hurricanes right Miami came in here expecting to be able to run the football and not rely on the pass and the big play but uh, they weren't able to control the line of scrimmage and eventually they had to result back to the Miami of old the big play the passing game and that's something that they really need to work on this week in practice yeah let's find out what Joe Rose thought about the game we go down to Joe at field level Thank you, Nat, and thank you, Eric. First of all, I think defensively the Hurricanes are very happy about the way they played. They played their style of defense, very aggressive, a lot of gang tackling and those types of things that make them such a great def defense throughout the years. Offensively, a different story. If you heard Dennis Erickson earlier, not happy with the way they weren't able to pick up the blitzes. A lot of drop footballs tonight. Costa didn't make the right uh, reads on a couple of occasions, and he didn't see the blitzes, which is even a bigger problem. So right now, I think in special teams, Dennis Erickson mentioned, was not very happy about the way they played. Had poor field position all day. And I tell you, if you look, when you have that type of field position and you play teams with the same type of talent, you're going to lose a lot of those ball games. So overall, I think the Hurricanes are going to have to play a lot better next week if they plan on beating Colorado and Boulder. All right, thanks very much, Joe Rose. Great working with you and Nat Moore. And don't forget to join us all again on Saturday night, October 2nd at 11 p.m. Tape delayed start as Georgia Southern comes to the Orange Bowl, the tango with nationally ranked Miami. And don't forget Sunshine Network, Florida Marlins coverage tomorrow, a 2.15 start from Wrigley Field, Cubs and Marlins. The pregame show with Paul Kennedy at 1.45. Play-by-play with Jay Randolph and Gary Carter beginning at 2.15. Well, interesting late afternoon and evening here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. The Hurricanes do make it 52 in a row on the home field. They win it by 19, 21 to 2. The Hurricanes will take a 2 and 0 record to Colorado next Saturday night.
Sunshine Network has been proud to present University of Miami Hurricanes football. An unusual day here at the Orange Bowl. The Hurricanes struggled a bit offensively, but still made enough big plays to win it 21-2. The biggest, the 45-yard touchdown catch by A.C. Tellison. But no question, the Hurricanes must play better next Saturday to win at Colorado. On behalf of Joe Rose, Nat Moore, our producer Jeff DeMoss, and our director John Liu, this is Eric Reed. Thanks for being with us on Sunshine Network. And from the Orange Bowl in Miami, good night, everyone.